podcast. After a decade of silence, Louis Scarcella finally tells his story, and so does Derek Hamilton. Listen to The Burden on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Last season on the Choosing Sides F1 podcast, we established unequivocally that F1 is the pinnacle of motorsports. We did, but honestly, I was left with more questions than answers, Tony. I'm Tony Cameron Brown, a tech, culture, and F1 commentator. And I'm Michael Costa, comedian from The Daily Show. Join us for season two of Choosing Sides F1 and get all of the answers. All of them? All of them. Listen to Choosing Sides F1 on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. From the Ingle Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. The pounding begins. The wagons are circled. Every wind is raided. It's football time in America, and this republic has never been stronger. The Sportsocracy, Beer City's best sports talk, live from the Ingle Studio. And a welcome into the Sportsocracy. We are coming to you live from the Ingle Studio on ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. The Sportsocracy is heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app, seen everywhere on YouTube. Just go to thesportsocracy.com. Click that live video link, subscribe to the channel, join us in the chat each and every day it is well it's it's a lot of rumors going around lots of visits happening in the draft miss season process tank asked me before the show did, did they just open the portal to visits nope these are just this the ones is just the ones about. that you care about <laughs> ian rapaport doesn't tend to tweet that hey jordan travis visited the new york jets because the response would be who cares? <laughs> so the so so the the top prospects are making all of their visits in the NFL draft process, and Stefan Diggs is now with the Houston Texans. Who I mean, I feel like we should have queued up taps for the Buffalo Bills. Well, I mean, I had a different idea. There's a song that I really like playing. They tend to play it on ASPCA commercials, and if you could cue that up for me, that would be great. Uh, because I want to start with the Houston Texans side of this, and and then we'll get to the Bills, which which needs the, the song yeah. that that needs the sad music. Right. right. I'm going to say something, and I mean it to the deepest fiber of my being. Mm-hmm. If you look at a roster right now, one to fifty three, is there a better roster in the NFL than the Houston Texans? And you may say, but, 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 Molly, now you're overreacting to one receiver. I had him at three anyway. I had him at three before this move happened. Because to me, C.J. Stroud is a top five quarterback in this league. Okay. We saw enough of that last year. Even if there's a sophomore regression, where does the line – I mean, you're not taking Tua Tonga Vailoa over him. You're not taking Jared Goff over him. You're not taking Kirk Cousins over him. He's locked into the top eight. Even if he comes in and goes full Jameis Winston, I can't see anymore. <laughs> That's not true. He has that kind of year. We will think less of him. Okay. The we just did it with Jalen Hurts. We just had Jalen Hurts okay. top Jalen four quarterback ne- in the league. Jalen Hurts never looked like CJ Stroud as a passer. Never. And, and that may be true. He also had every advantage you could possibly want. Mm-hmm. He had the best, one of the best, arguably the best, however you want to say it, combinations of wide receivers in the NFL in A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Yes. He also had Dallas Godierte and one of the best offensive lines in the league. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at Houston. Name me a team in this league that has a better receiving core than Houston. I'll wait. I've tried to figure it out for two days. Well, I don't have one. I mean, Cincinnati, if they hang on to T. Higgins, maybe. I'd still take, I would still take uh, Houston. Because Noah Brown's your four. Do you realize how many things you have to prepare for when I can throw Nico Collins and Stefan Diggs and Tank Dale, who, by the way, I don't have to rush back because now I have a guy that can play in the slot. Mm-hmm. It's the best receiving court in the league. Oh, and by the way, they have Irv Smith or whatever uh, bum tight end that they're, they're planning on rolling out this year. Mike Gesicki. I have Dalton Schultz. I also have Joe Mixon, who's one of the best receiving backs 
in the league. Mm -hmm. Not one of the best running backs. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best receiving backs. And my defense is better than yours. I have two elite pass rushers. I have one of the fastest linebacking cores in the league and have a really good young secondary. Mm -hmm. If I had – Joshua Penning says he doesn't get the love for the Diggs move. I'm going to need you to explain that to me. Oh, he's a head case. Damn near every receiver in the league is a head case. I get it. And if you look back at Stefan's history, he's fine in year one. He's never caused a problem in year one. Mm -hmm. Starts to be a little malcontent in year two. By year three, rut row. I don't need him to be three years of the best receiver in the league. I didn't pay for him to be three years of the best receiver in the league. I paid for a good two. That was the, the value that Houston gave up. Mm -hmm. It's a second round pick next year. I didn't have to give up anything this year. Mm -hmm. I have to pay him. Oh, yeah, I had the third most cap space in the league going into the offseason. And I've added Joe Mixon and Daniil Hunter and brought back Dalton Schultz mm -hmm. of a team that was already a playoff team to begin with. Oh, yeah, and uh, I'm one of the youngest teams in the league, so I'm still ascending. And my question is, when you look around the AFC, what team do you feel better about? Take Kansas City out. It's obvious. They've got the best quarterback, arguably, in NFL history. Who do you feel better about? Talent-wise, you can't really feel better about anybody. Position for position, Houston does appear to have the the advantage everywhere. Well, and then there's the, the other thing that, that came, I'm... First one that came to my mind was Baltimore. And then, yeah, but... They what, don't have your receivers. your receivers. Right, exactly. They have a Zay Flowers and nothing else. Right. Mark Andrews. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Your tight end is slightly better than mine mm -hmm. because I would say Mark Andrews is probably the third best tight end in the league, maybe fourth. Depends on how you feel about Sam Laporta already. And I have – I'll be kind and say I have three receivers that are better than anybody you have. Zay Flowers and Tank Dell is kind of a wash. Mm -hmm. They're both little shifty guys that – I would take Zay Flowers over Tank Dell, but it's close. He's my three. Mm-hmm. It's not Miami. Oh, good Lord, no. It's not the Jets. Well, I mean, no. you know, if you draft Roman Dunze <laughs> and you got Mike Wu, because he is on visit with Mike Jets, no, I'm just saying, that does sound like something that I would like. Joe Douglas, I have loved everything you've done. Go get me Roman Dunze! <laughs> uh, it's it's not your Jets yet, no, which I, you know, I don't think they will be. I don't either. Um I, I, there's not there's not really a good case to be made for another one i mean when it comes to talent okay maybe houston is a number one in the league but when it comes to winning and being a team and all of those things when you say that the houston texans should be the favorite to win the super bowl which you said earlier mm -hmm. today how hard is it for a team to win three in a row because we're sitting on Kansas hard. City with two in a row. It's very hard. I'm still just not getting away from it. I'm I, Houston may be my three, but I don't know that I can get any higher than that. Well, you said it's very. You said it's very hard to win the the Super Bowl three years in a row. Yes, of course it is. Name me the team that did it. There hasn't been one. Exactly. That's kind of a point. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that too. Didn't matter. Salary cap era, free agency era, none of it mattered. Because something is going to trip you up. Mm -hmm. Kansas City, um, we're going to talk about you later in the show. Because you got a thing that's happening that I put no stock in. Now I'm putting a lot of stock in. But we'll get to that in a bit. Mm -hmm. Look around the AFC. You said Baltimore. Yes. Baltimore is less of a team right now than they were three months ago. Fact or fiction? Fact. Fact. Pittsburgh Steelers, are they a better team or a worse team than they were three months ago? I'd say better. I would say worse. Uh, you have George Pickens and then to throw to. Your line is still eh. And you've got a year older TJ Watt. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's aggressively worse, but you're worse. And you're counting on, let's ride. <laughs> Sorry, I don't buy that. Mm -hmm. Cleveland Browns have a question mark at quarterback. Cincinnati has a quarterback coming off an injury and a, and a number two receiver that is kind of what makes that offense go is the fact that I've got two guys that you have to really nest down on that may or may not be on that team. Mm -hmm. 
The Buffalo Bills, who we'll get to in a second, are an afterthought now. I trust the New York Jets about as much as I trust the government and the Miami Dolphins see previous. The Chargers are in a rebuilding year. Mm -hmm. The Broncos don't have a quarterback. The Raiders are not bad. They're not a bad team. They don't contend with this. No. Not Sorry, I'm not going to look at C.J. Stroud and Gardner Minshew and go, oh, yeah, I'm sure that'll end up just fine. <laughs> no, you definitely lose. Then I look at your division, and this is the part that I've yet to hear anybody talk about. What is the biggest weakness for all three teams in that division? Well, now two of the three. I was going to say, I think you're going secondaries here. But... Secondary is the weakness of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm-hmm. It's also the weakness of the Indianapolis Colts. Yes. The Tennessee Titans don't have the firepower to stick with you. Uh, you're getting better, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But if you're giving me the Tennessee Titans or, what, or what's going to impede Houston, I'm going to laugh at you until <laughs> I soil myself. You're not wrong. They have the easiest path because they play in the easiest division. Mm-hmm. It's better. The AFC East has gotten way closer to you. I'm just telling you now. You can call me crazy. You can say I'm out of my mind. And you know what? I might be wrong. I'm a gambler. I look at odds and percentages. I got Houston at plus 2,500 yesterday and then doubled down on it at plus 1,800. And I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm looking at the other teams that are sitting in that same territory, it's not even close. I am a Jets fan. If you look at those two teams side by side, it's not close, and I don't care what we did to them last year. I flat out don't care. Mm -hmm. It looks great on paper, and I don't have any doubts that it's going to come together on the field. We all know how we feel about D'Amico Ryans as a coach. We screamed that that he should be the hire in Houston. It's all now worked out. And now they have Stephon Diggs. Now they have one of the most talented rosters in the league. Now the question is, can you live up to the hype? Because now you're going to be expected to win. It's much better, much, much more different playing the underdog role than it is playing the favorite role. And it's very quick in his career to be doing this. All of them for the head coach for the you know for for the quarterback for all of them i'm not saying it can't be done we saw joe burrow go to a a super bowl in his second year you still haven't answered the question that i asked you to start this yes which one do you feel better about outside of kansas city who do you feel better about nobody exactly that's the point i got a team that would be trying to do something that's never been done before in the history of this league and there's not another team in the conference that I feel better about. Mm-hmm. Then you look at the schedule, which Tank and I did earlier, and as I belly laughed, going, they'll go 11-6 and six if C.J. Stroud goes full bird box and comes out with a blindfold. There are a lot of winnable games on the schedule. Just wonder if we're going too quick. Because it's all it does all have to come together on the field. And we went this crazy over the Los Angeles Chargers a couple of years ago. They obviously were not the team that we expected. I never went this crazy over the Chargers because I never believed this much in Justin Herbert. The liked ja- him. The Jacksonville Jaguars. You had him as the number one seed a couple of what two years ago because last they year. had a ter- was it last year mm-hmm. they had a terrible schedule. Thought that they were head and shoulders above everybody else. Guess what? We saw regression in t- and Trevor Lawrence. They couldn't get it done. They had an overrated coach with a bad offensive line and Mm -hmm. a quarterback that had expectations that were too high. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can say about Houston that I could say about Jacksonville is that the the expectations are really, really high. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not different. I'm just saying we've been here before, and is it too early to say that the Houston Texans are legit Super Bowl contenders? A place that, obviously, two years ago, none of us ever thought they would be here. Oh, no, this is the – I would argue that in the last 25 years, we've had two complete turnarounds of franchises that are unlike anything we have ever seen. It was the Bengals and the Texans. Yes. A year and a half ago, if you had told me that, well, next year you're going to say the Texans are the favorite to win the AFC, I would literally have had you fitted for a straight jacket (laughs) because you are out of your gourd. Mm -hmm. And my how – one giant draft right one giant draft where you got tank dell and you got will anderson and you got um cj stroud at the top and just a couple of savvy moves and getting the right coach and getting the right coaching staff what you just said is the difference Mm -hmm. because everybody talks about oh it was cj stroud and will anderson no 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 that's not that was the 
that was the icing on top. That cake was built a long time ago. Adding Laramie Tunsil in a trade, drafting 843 linemen, who many of them looked awful until they were coached right. Mm-hmm. All those pieces on that defense, they were there the year before, and it was bad. But then you add Will Anderson, and you coach him up, and all of a sudden they're really, really good. D'Amico Ryans is the only coach I have ever seen in my life that was a coordinator that I knew was going to be a good head coach. Now, I thought he was going into an absolute bloodbath with Houston, but I knew he was going to be a good coach because that is a leader of men. Mm -hmm. That is a guy that made defenses work in San Francisco. That is a guy that every player that has ever played for him has said he sees this game differently. I could do this for 10 minutes. That's the difference is that you have the coach. Every And I see people in the chat saying, didn't we say this about Jacksonville? Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Jacksonville had holes that Houston doesn't have. That defense was a hole. It was always going to be a hole. I just thought they were going to be able to score on you to such a level with Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk and Zay Jones and ETN coming out of the backfield and Trevor Lawrence that it wasn't going to matter. What I undersold was that the line was terrible. Line's not terrible in Houston. Mm-hmm. Defense's not terrible. I can beat you seven different ways if I need to. Frankly, Joe Mixon's going to win you one game every single year because he'll have that. I caught 11 passes and scored five touchdowns game. Yes. You can call me crazy. And I understand that it sounds crazy and it sounds like I'm going too far. Evan Doyle said the expectations are going to get insane. You're right. They are. Mm -hmm. They are going to get insane. But sometimes teams pay off those expectations. You know who did that last year? Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions paid that off. Mm -hmm. We had the same expectations because everything stayed the same. In this league, we worry so much about changing the culture. We've got to change the coach. We've got to change the quarterback. Maybe there's a merit to we left a GM in place that you and I had routinely said is the dumbest personnel guy in the NFL. No doubt. That's weird. He doesn't seem so dumb now. You look up and down that roster and just go, oh, I get it. You had to stop bouncing coaches around like ping pong balls. You had to get a good coach. Just so happened that the best coach on the market was absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt the best coach on the market yep. that was available. Yep. And you had connections too, which didn't hurt either. It's almost like, I don't know. When I think about Nick Casario, I think about that guy that we've all worked with. Right, that guy who, I mean, he'll show up and he'll be okay. But for some reason, he just keeps falling into great opportunity after great opportunity and climbing that ladder, even though maybe there are some that work a little bit harder. Maybe some that are a little bit more talented. But is that Nick Casario? Did he just stumble into a great situation? Because I kind of think so. I He's feel, the one that drafted all these players. But I feel this like, was not a great situation by any stretch of the imagination. No, I can argue it was the worst situation in the league. But he created it. No, right? he didn't. He didn't draft Deshaun Watson. He fostered. He didn't it. take the franchise quarterback and do what the franchise quarterback did. <laughs> all these players that we're looking at now, going, this is such a great surrounding cast. Mm-hmm. Guess who drafted them all? Mm-hmm. So you're having revisionist history here. Nick Casario did not create the Deshaun Watson thing. He landed in it mm-hmm. when Bill O'Brien had crashed this franchise. He didn't trade DeAndre Hopkins for a bag of footballs and a geriatric running back. Bill O'Brien did that. Mm-hmm. And then he has used the draft to build. You can't like Brad Holmes and not like Nick Casario. I'll go that far. It's not physically possible. They did the exact same thing. One of them, it took longer and it wasn't obvious from the get go. And it looked dumb because he was drafting guys way higher than he should have. Right. They've all worked out. All of them have worked out. All of them? You know what I mean. (laughs) I guess. I don't know. This team was terrible before C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud was the cake topper, for sure. Well, yeah, and he started, you know, he he will forever be known as the catalyst of all of this. As every quarterback in the NFL is. Of course. Without that line, without that receiving core, he would have been Bryce Young. Mm-hmm. We just saw this. Mm-hmm. C.J. Stroud went two. Always remember that. Every evaluator I know would have taken Bryce Young one. Yep. And I have always said, and I will continue to say, 
would CJ have been a little better in Carolina than Bryce was? Yes. Would Bryce have been as good in Houston as CJ was? Probably not. Mm -hmm. It would have been a hell of a lot closer than it was. Surrounding, supporting cast matters. And that steers me into the next thing. Mm -hmm. Bill Barnwell, who's one of our our favorite little punching bags around here because he says things sometimes that are just dumb, dumb. He did a deep dive into quarterbacks. And he said something in a much more elegant way that I've been saying for a long time. We'll talk about what that is after the break. You're in the Sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. The roof is the most important part of the home, and this month ESPN Asheville and Balkan Roofing are giving one away free of charge. Through April, go to ESPNAVL.com and click on the Balkan Roofing's Roofing for a Reason. Follow the link to nominate a homeowner in need of a new roof and why they should be our winner. At the end of the month, one iHeart Asheville winner will be selected. Make your nominations again at ESPNAVL.com. Roofing for a reason with Balkan Roofing. In the 90s, New York detective Louis Scarcella locked up the worst criminals. Putting bad guys away. There's no feeling like it. Then jailhouse lawyers took aim led by Derek Hamilton. Scarcella took me to the precinct and lied. 20 men eventually walked free. Now, in the Burden podcast, after a decade of silence, Louis Scarcella finally tells his story, and so does Derek Hamilton. Listen to The Burden on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial-free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American idiot. A commercial-free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free, never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel. Apparel shops. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. The Sportsocracy. Ice up, son. Ice up. We are back in the Sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. After the trade, Stefan Diggs going to the Houston Texans. The Texans are, well, they're, they're now considered a contender. Should be. It's one of the most talented rosters in the league. Exciting offense with a with a guy that came back who could have been a head coach to run the offense. You got one of the best young coaches, head coaches in the league in D'Amico. Ryan's all the weapons, all the defense. They're absolutely loaded. As I said before the break, C.J. Stroud 
will obviously forever be linked to as the catalyst to this turnaround. Because without hitting on the quarterback, you're the Jets. And I don't mean that as a as a personal dig to you, Jeremy. I think you did. I didn't. But but I mean honestly, we looked at the Jets last year and went, that's a team built for success. We couldn't have foreseen any of the, you know, the mass injuries that happened on the offensive line. Well, but, I mean, we could have because that was the thing that gave me the engine to go into the year. But maybe you shouldn't count on a 38 year old tackle. But on, oh. yeah, but on paper, it looked great. Without the quarterback, you're not a great team. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important to hit on these quarterbacks and why I say Nick Casario, sure, he was good, but was he more lucky than good that he got CJ Stroud? No. Okay. I mean, I, just, I feel like you're taking one thing that he did. He also traded up to three to get Will Anderson when everybody on the planet thought he was a moron. Mm-hmm. That worked. That's not lucky. That's you, you did it. I feel like you're one of those people that you don't change. And I never thought I would sit across from a person that was more stubborn than me. You change your opinion, and it takes so damn much to do it. Mm-hmm. This is one of those times. We were wrong about Nick Casario. Now, it didn't start well. No, it was terrible. No, it wouldn't have started well for anyone. You had arguably the worst personnel guy in the history of this league that just typhooned this roster. And then you were handed a situation with your quarterback that nobody could have anticipated. Mm -hmm. well, nobody I mean, was coming out of that clean. Well, I, well, well, I mean, it, it, it didn't start off well, right? So he comes to town, and then all of the stories start coming out, coming out about him having players follow that wasn't him that was jack easterby right but it was all part of the whole crew right it was east he hired easterby no, right well, easterby was ahead of that was before him okay and he was over him that was the one that they jettisoned and went no no he was okay. the president of, the, of i don't remember what his title was he was super high up in that in in the texans mm -hmm. and easterby was the one following people not nick casario okay Blaming him for that would be like you saying something ridiculous and blaming, blaming Brian Hall for it. <laughs> or me. It could be me, too. Well, I don't know why it's good I didn't we're walking myself. through this. Yeah, that's sure not there are Casario. a lot of people that think the same thing I do. Casario is the personnel guy. That's what he was brought in to do. Mm -hmm. That is all he deals with. Easterby was really a hat on a hat. And they quickly figured out when he started following players and things like that, mm -hmm. this is not working. Then Nick Casario took a bigger role when Easterby left, and now we're here. Okay. Now, you were you were telling me the the expectations and all of these things that could go wrong for the Texans. Bill Barnwell wrote an article today on ESPN.com, right. and it was called NFL Draft Quarterback Hits and Misses, What History Says About the 2024 NFL Class. And he went back through every year that we've had four quarterbacks or more go in a draft. Mm -hmm. I have told you all of these things in the past, so I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. It's a great read, and I highly recommend that you read it. That's not the part I'm stuck on. The part I'm stuck on is when he gets to the cost of taking a quarterback in the first round. And he explains this in a more elegant way than I can with his 28,000 words as per huge <laughs> with an article that he writes – but the basic tenor of it was to justify taking a quarterback in the top five, you have to hit on one, one out of every five times. Mm -hmm. Has to be a franchise quarterback or better, one out of every five times. Because you're paying so little to quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And that got me thinking. Name me quarterbacks that you actually feel like are better than C.J. Stroud. All right, let's say he has the sophomore regression. Let's go worst case scenario. I said I couldn't see him possibly being worse than eight. Even if he starts slow with the sophomore campaign, I don't see a path that at the end of the year we have him any lower than eight at quarterback. So name me the quarterbacks that you would have ahead of him. Okay. No particular order. Doesn't matter. Um, Patrick Mahomes. 45 million flat. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson. 52 million flat. Josh Allen. 43 million flat. Joe Burrow. 55 million flat. 
Uh, Herbert. 52-5. Tua. The fact you have Tua ahead of him makes me chuckle a lot. <laughs> uh, 7.5. Okay. How much does C.J. Stroud make next year? I don't know. $9.069 million. Okay. So let me ask you this question. Worse comes to worse, you think C.J. has as bad a year as is really uh, a, that I'm able to wrap my brain around, mm-hmm. short of him getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Joe Burrow six times better than him? No. No. Justin Herbert six times better than him? No. No. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. I have such a cheap quarterback that I can prop him up exactly how I did with Jalen Hurts. And he's better. He's better, point blank. This is why I'm so convinced that Houston is such a good bet. Because this is the first time. Because we went through a Gnarls Barkley set of years at quarterback. Because you look at that Kenny Pickett. Uh, <clears throat> I just ate a beat ball sandwich, and I'm not going to lie. I, I felt the Angela just thinking about that class. <laughs> the year before that, 2021 with uh, Trevor and Justin Fields and blah, 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 blah. We've had a bunch of bad quarterback classes in a row. Look around the landscape of the league. Who else has an elite quarterback, which takes two out of it? Mm-hmm. Who else has an elite quarterback that's cheap? Ain't one. Trevor Lawrence is the only one that I could even make an argument for. That I could even make an argument for. Mm-hmm. What precluded Joe Burrow from doing this is that you had Justin Herbert, who was cheap, and Lamar Jackson, who was cheap for a while, and on and on and on, because you had so many quarterbacks that were so good at one time. Now, I have a $40 million head start on all of you. That's going to be a problem. And I've got four years to do this. Because even with the accolades, he'll still only be $30 million four years from now. Mm-hmm. I, w- I wish there was a way to bet what I'm getting ready to say. Short of injury or you just absolutely boo-boo kiddying this as bad as you can, I do not see a path the Houston Texans don't win a Super Bowl in the next four years. Because I don't believe in Caleb Williams as much as everybody else does. I think all of these guys are a little bit raw, and he's going to be the only one on a rookie deal in one year. Yep. Because Trevor's got to get that, – that's got to get taken care of this offseason. Or if not, this offseason next year with the option. It's a great time to be a Houston Texan fan. Yep. So with the extra savings, can you put together a championship roster? Somebody's going to do it. The Kansas City Chiefs are not going to win Super Bowls forever. No, and I struggle to believe that they're going to win, uh, that they'll be the first team to win a third one. Uh, Kelvin Joyner asked a really good question, which is uh, what does – Houston have to do to make sure CJ doesn't end up like Andrew Luck, protect him. See, because and that's one of the most interesting parts of the article from Bill Barnwell is Andrew Luck was really the first one after the slotting happened. So you had guys like Matthew Stafford, Sam Bradford that came into this league. They were one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league from the jump before they had ever thrown a pass. When they changed it to slotting, that's when everything changed. That's also why you're seeing a higher bust rate. Because NFL teams are seeing this the same way. Mm-hmm. If I've got a guy that's even, ah, maybe he could be a lead, I don't know, Daniel Jones, I should just move on. Mm-hmm. Because every team that has extended that guy has regretted it. I guarantee you Seattle regrets Geno Smith right now. Yes. New York definitely regrets Daniel Jones. And we could do this for an extended period of time. And that's why I think you're going to keep seeing these big classes. We only had five quarterbacks drafted in uh, the first round. How many times do you think that's happened in the modern NFL? Five or more? Fewer. Three. It's happened three times. Yeah. Two of them are in the last four years. There's a reason for that. Because now I get a cheap look at a quarterback for five years. Build that roster out around him, Mm -hmm. turn him into an NFL quarterback, put him in a good situation to succeed. And Houston just did that. Yep. Conversely, Buffalo, ah! quarterback got expensive you know okay so we bought too much house and we're gonna have to sell some stuff so kids pack your lunches get those old paper bags out and start taking you an apple yep which which by all those calculations just in summary in my own head what i just heard was that good luck one of you is going to get out of the cellar 
every year. If we keep having where you're only getting one franchise quarterback a draft, then last year was Houston's turn to get out of the cellar. Mm -hmm. I would say Chicago's is this year. This year year could be, uh, yes, Chicago's turn. Then next year it'll be whoever takes that top quarterback. So you got one a year that's going to be on this That's on average. Because the you have rest good of years, us, you have bad years. Right, because the rest of you are going to keep doing the same things you've been doing. Those who keep, who can't find a quarterback, you're just waiting for your turn. And you're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over, which is chasing bad quarterbacks. But I would rather have a mediocre, cheap quarterback than a mediocre, expensive. Mm-hmm. Which is why I'll keep drafting them. You're in the Sportsocracy, and this is CSPN Asheville. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Now, not much help for the cold. A stiff breeze around, gusting 30-plus miles per hour this afternoon with mainly rain showers. Winter weather advisory is still in effect for some of the higher elevations to the west and north of us. Overnight tonight, some rain showers, which may mix with a little bit of snow, will drop close to freezing, but I don't think any problems for Friday morning. Hardly sunny breezy in the afternoon, Friday 50, sunny 56 Saturday, sunshine near 70 Sunday. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Robert Half. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Their recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, they know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. At Sandstone Health and Rehabilitation, our focus is on you. With 18 locations across North Carolina specializing in short-term rehabilitation and long-term care, our team is ready to support your loved one providing the compassionate care they need for whatever lies ahead. From physical and occupational therapy to individualized long-term support, discover the ways Sandstone provides compassionate care for all at sanstonehealth.com. In this week's Marketer's Report, Angela Zapeda, Chief Marketing Officer of Hyundai Motor America, talks about audio storytelling. For an auto brand, a lot of people scratch their heads and say, why would you put your brand on a channel that doesn't show the sheet metal? But there's a lot we can talk about about these vehicles that gets people excited about the car. And it's more than just the sheet metal. It really is about lifestyle um, in a lot of ways. For us, it's about storytelling. That's driving a lot of brand awareness, but we can also drive a lot of intent. And that's because we can talk a lot about the features. I think we're learning that we can get a lot more from audio. As the number one audio company, iHeart Media gives marketers access to all, from national to local. Every audience, live conversations, trusted influencers, and the insights and data you need to grow. Not just a media company, iHeart Media is your access company. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. That's iHeartResults.com. Now at Wendy's, get a Dave's single for a buck or a Dave's double for just two bucks with the in-app offer. Limited time offer participating U.S. Wendy's. Redeem in Wendy's app. Account registration required. See offer in Wendy's app for details. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White haze, each perfect, scary berries, and my personal favorite, mean green. And number three, at 6% ABV, max protect. Always drink responsibly, and you must be 21 or over. Beast Unleashed, available at your local retailer. Boy, you must be outside your mind. The Sportsocracy. Just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. Back in the Sportsocracy, this is ESPN Asheville. The Oakland Athletics, I don't think they're changing their name, but they'll have a new city next year. Well, I mean, nobody would know. (laughs) I mean, tens and tens of people showed up to their game yesterday. (laughs) I I honestly think if you will pay for a front row seat, they'll let you pitch an inning. They may. If you pay full price. Did you see that? Nobody's paying full price to go to those games. 
Oh, That's I mean, the at this point, in town. you remember when Argentina like completely collapsed and their money was laying in the streets because it was yes. less valuable than the paper it was printed on? Yes. That's the way Oakland athletic tickets are right now. <laughs> you could use them to wipe your keister and it would be a better use of the paper that they printed it on than putting Oakland A tickets on it. <laughs> little sharp. The, Watch the edge. The, that could end bad for the you. The A's have reached a deal. They're, so they're so they're they're building the new stadium in Las Vegas allegedly. Uh, they're knocking down the which one was it the Flamingo Hotel or the oh, Columbiana know. or the Tropicana the Tropicana that's when it was. Uh, the, they're knocking down the Tropicana. They're building this new state of the art stadium, but it's not going to be ready until 2028. The lease runs up in Oakland this year, so 2025 they will be the Sacramento A's. I think here's the, I can't here's wait the for, good news though they can take all their fans with them in one car in, in one Toyota in, Tacoma exactly uh they're moving into the minor league stadium where the Sacramento River Cats play they'll be sharing the stadium for three seasons with the San Francisco Giants triple a team and um well it only holds 14,000 people max. <laughs> it won't be a problem. <laughs> it only holds 14,000 people max. Would you like to take a guess, Jeremy Green, at what the average attendance for la- – we won't talk about this year. I'll talk about this year in a second. For last year's Oakland A's team, average attendance per game was – Okay, I have to ask a question before I answer this. Is this how many people actually showed up or the lie that they tell you over the loudspeaker? This, this is the this is the loudspeaker. This is the official average attendance with the league. It was the lowest in the league by a stretch. Okay. So I will say that 63.38 people showed up every night. So I will say they moved the comma two places and pushed that decimal out and said 6300, Alex. 6300. No, you're you're a little low. You're a little late. Then remember, they balloon those up just a tad. Just the a tad. 6,300's ballooning it up a lot. Yeah, the average attendance last year for an Oakland A's home game was 10,276. Bull squirt. That was 4,100 behind the next to last place team. Ooh, who was? Uh, you want to take a guess at who that was? Tampa Bay Rays. No. Kansas City Royals. Oh, you're so close. Pittsburgh Pirates. No. Cincinnati Reds. No, you're going the wrong way. You see how many teams I could do this with? And and <laughs> I've actually got more. This uh, sport's doing great. You 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 nailed you you nailed number twenty six, twenty seven, and twenty eight. Number twenty nine, you forgot one very important one, the Miami Marlins. Oh yeah. They averaged fourteen thousand three hundred uh guests last year per game. Number one in the league. Take a chance. New York Yankees, Los Angeles Dodgers. Oh, that yeah, their their stadium's bigger. Yes, forty seven thousand a game compared to the ten thousand a game for the Oakland A's. So the fact that they're moving into a stadium that only holds a max of fourteen thousand, that is including standing room only and sitting on the hill in the park that they have in the outfield. Uh, but so far this year has been absolutely terrible. So to start out the year, the Oakland A's. For the first game of the season, thirteen thousand tickets. Lie. That's that's good. That's that's good. They gave away eleven thousand of them. For for an opener, that's good. I, Adam Scarborough just had the greatest idea ever. What did he say? You want to fix the homeless problem? Let them live in the A Stadium. Then you got a crowd. Let's go. Let's We're go. solving problems around Let's America. Go. Let's go. I mean, what they got forty three thousand seats. <laughs> that's at least forty two thousand seven hundred spots for for a uh, hobo gym to to set up <laughs> camp gym. friday night's game of the opening weekend they sold three thousand eight hundred and thirty seven tickets all right i'm never believing that's another terrible. i'm never believing another baseball attendance until you take roll <laughs> that that's money roll until you give me a list of jim johnson here <laughs> betty you you not here she's not here i i can't say what i usually end that with till you give me a present and accounted for we checked the roll they said present 
I am not going to believe you. I saw a picture of the third inning of yesterday's A's game. There were 200 people there. Mm -hmm. I think we should start doing the ratings for this show the same way that they do baseball attendance. Seven million people listen to the show a day. <laughs> I will guarantee you there are more people that listen to this show a day than showed up to the Oakland A's game yesterday. <laughs> I'll bet anything you want, and I can prove it. <laughs> it's not good. Not good. But, hey, uh, for three years, they they might have a couple of sellouts. I don't think there's anything else to do in Sacramento. So. Well, what's going to be really sad is when they can't sell out a AAA stadium. That will be example number 7,412 of Because Baseball. My story comes from the Irish Basketball League. Didn't know that existed. Nope. That was a new, was a new thing. Is Brian Scalabrini the, uh, the commissioner? He should be. Yeah. If he's not, he should be. I feel like the Irish Basketball League is a league where I could go get up some J's and be <laughs> just fine. And I would be the least Irish-looking person that, were, that played in that league. Mm -hmm. Anyway. March 23rd, Limerick Sport Eagles met the Port Louise Panthers. I don't know if I'm saying that right, and frankly, I don't care. They 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 played. It was 78-78 as the buzzer sounded. Competitive game. But foul was called. Foul was called, mm -hmm. and the Limerick Sport Eagles drained two free throws to win the game. Now, one small problem. When did the foul occur? That I, I watched the video. It's it's pretty damning evidence. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, two seconds after the after the buzzer, you're close. One point six. <laughs> so the Port Louise Panthers they they did what you do. They filed a grievance. They said we have been. They, they called the the league office and they said shame him. This is it. This is wrong and it's awful and you must fix it. So what did the league office do? They shot it down originally. They filed another appeal and they went, you know what? You're right. You're right. Foul occurred after the after the horn. We'll take the points off the board. We'll replay the last point three seconds. Okay, let's go. Tie ball game. Uh -huh. We'll replay. But you have to drive to them. Okay. What'd they say? We're good. It's it's fine. We filed the appeal, but the appeal wasn't really about us playing this <laughs> and you minute. rectifying. I swear to you, they put out a statement. And in the statement, let me pull it up here. It's on Twitter. Uh, it is one of the dumber things I've ever read in my life. We would like to clearly state that at each step, we follow the correct procedures as laid out by Basketball Ireland, but we feel that we have not been treated the same in return. Uh -huh. We think the ordering of 0 .3 seconds to be replayed of our quarterfinal is completely against the spirit of basketball, and as said above, was never the basis for the appeal. Then what was the appeal for? Exactly. All right, you appealed it. About? You got what you wanted, yeah. and then you went, no, <laughs> I wanted it that day. <laughs> it's the principle of the thing. That's like a kid complaining that you didn't take him to McDonald's on Tuesday. You took him on Thursday, and they sat back there begrudgingly yeah. eating their french fries like, I wanted this on Tuesday. <laughs> you suck, and I hate it here. I'm going to live with my dad. I'm calling DSS. I'm going to live with my dad and <laughs> Betty. She lets me smoke cigarettes, and you're awful. <laughs> she never lets him put it out on the couch. Uh, no, no, uh, Betty. Betty is she's she takes care of the upholstery. <laughs> she's a good one, that Betty. I guarantee you, somebody tuned into the last four minutes of this and went, "What are you talking what is, about? What is even happening right now? Why does he well, yell so much? Why would you do that? Why would you file for the for the file for the grievance?" And then they say, yeah, you're right. Let's replay it. And you say, no, it's the dumbest. I think that's the dumbest thing to do in the NBA is when they're, oh, we got to file a grievance. Well, why? Because it's not going to change anything. It's not like the league went, oh, you know what? You're right. We're just going to change it. We're going to take those points off the board. Yeah, but now actually, you have a league actually, doing you know the exact thing that you want them to do. And you said, no, actually, you know what? We, we, we see, we see your, 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 your query here. And we're actually just going to give you the win. How's that sound? Yeah, because that sounds like what it's. That's what you wanted us to do. <laughs> Wait, was it a road game? Yes. I'll oh, see. They can't make the travel again. It's an hour and fifteen minutes. Oh shoot! You know, I, you know what? I got, fare. I got an idea. <laughs> Call the Oakland A's. They have spots on their bus because their eight fans don't take up a whole bus. <laughs> they can drive you to Port Louise or wherever it is. Port Louise. 
uh, in our YouTube comments. <laughs> Gambit fan said he's disappointed that neither one of us mentioned the massive line brawl between the Devils and the Rangers last night. Oh yeah, that was that was cool. Well, I mean, okay, so we had eight white dudes beat the sin out of each other. That's happened at every bar I've ever been to in my life. It really didn't catch me that off guard. Good for you, old time hockey. Frankly, I think that's how they should play hockey. Like, don't even do faceoffs anymore. Just the two centers punch each other in the face as hard as they can until one of them falls. That team gets the puck. Let's go hockey yeah but then how was the rest of that game because eight dudes got kicked out immediately yeah and then you, it turned into a, a a sea dragons or a tiger cats or something right game. right I, this turned into an echl game and woo, here we go i don't know it could have been a fantastic game from that point on i don't care enough about it to watch it when i saw the highlight i was like hey that's cool i've seen that happen once the only hockey game i ever went to i've told you there were three fights in the first five minutes one of them was just like that Puck dropped. Screw it. Gloves come off. We're fighting. Frankly, I think and there I should never be. wanted to watch another hockey game after that because I went. That's never going to get any better. Frankly, I think there should be fighting in every sport. Yes, I agree. Just you know, baseball, not with a bat. Okay, <laughs> that's crimes. <laughs> but wait a minute, you want more fighting in baseball, but you don't like it when they throw the ball at each other. Uh, no, because that's <laughs> how do I that's say? Maddeningly inconsistent. That's kitty cat behavior okay <laughs> don't take a ball from 60 feet away and throw it at somebody and go i'm mad at you boo boo oh crap he's coming uh -oh. <laughs> hide me where's the big dude that usually plays first base get over here <laughs> he's gonna beat my keister mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's Again. no i don't like Again, that maddeningly inconsistent it's not inconsistent at all it's kitty cat behavior to throw a ball at somebody from 60 feet away you want to be you want to be a, a badman, then you get nose to nose and you throw a you throw a hammer fist there, pumpkin, because I can do the same in kind. <laughs> All right, so close combat is what you're talking about. Okay, yeah, we both have to uh, look. You can continue to throw the ball at them if they can throw the bat at you. I'm fine with that, but you throw that stupid ball at them, they throw a bat at you, they end up in jail. That is crap. It's, it's crap and i don't like it is is that how it works well you throw a bat at somebody it's not gonna end well for you yeah i mean i mean i think there were charges that one time for the for the for the guy who th who hit the umpire with the bat but but I, but i think bats have been thrown before and nobody got charged oh that was that was before joe biden america <laughs> <laughs> now, now everybody's now you could, charge. you could get arrested for hurting somebody's feelings right now so okay <laughs> Now, rob a bank? Not so much. Right. Let that guy off with a warning. Mm -hmm. Tell him not to do it again. You're in the sportsocracy. This is ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM and 1400. we got Jeremy's picks of the evening coming up next in green on green. After the top of the hour, it will be time to give the, uh, the old eulogy for the Buffalo Bills, correct? He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger's a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right. That's real important. The golf game. Right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body, to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics Regenerative Medicine is regenerating me all natural and that's what i'm about i'm gonna tell everybody why i'm better oh and by the way it looks like the competitive satch is back we're all in the same boat and i'm getting better and i'm watching them stay old go to qckinetics.com get relief and your game back call for your complimentary consultation call qc kinetics 828-333-9517 that's 828-333-9517 828-333-9517 in the 90s, New York detective Louis Scarcella locked up the worst criminals. Putting bad guys away. There's no feeling like it. Then jailhouse lawyers took aim, led by Derek Hamilton. Scarcella took me to the precinct and lied. 20 men eventually walked free. Now, in the Burden podcast, after a decade of silence, Louis Scarcella finally tells his story. And so does Derek Hamilton. Listen to The Burden on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. 
At age 30, Carissa finished her high school diploma. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, you can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. The roof is the most important part of the home, and this month the SPN Asheville and Balkan Roofing are giving one away free of charge. Through April, go to ESPNAVL.com and click on the Balkan Roofing's Roofing for a Reason. Follow the link to nominate a homeowner in need of a new roof and why they should be our winner. At the end of the month, one iHeart Asheville winner will be selected. Make your nominations again at ESPNAVL.com. Roofing for a Reason with Balkan Roofing. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a sub and hospitality touch okay so even a guy like me that's been wagering sports for a long time can get got by a 50 burger from malachi flynn who i'm not even sure i knew was still in the league things happen we'll try to get back to winning ways tonight i'm jeremy green of the sportsocracy.com and this is green on green brought to you by DraftKings sportsbook something to always remember with day-to-day sports like baseball and basketball odds makers move like a cruise ship Joel Embiid has returned for the Philadelphia 76ers, and that makes this team way better. Tonight, they travel to Miami, and they're a a two-and-a-half-point dog. Without Joel Embiid, that would make sense. With him, not so much. Then you add in the fact that Philadelphia is trying to stay out of the play-in tournament, and one of the teams they have to pass is Miami. They're the better team. They're catching points. And Jimmy Butler's out riding horses in the streets of Miami. So I'll take the better team that's not spending their off day with livestock. Give me Philadelphia. Minus the two and a half, I'll take them in the money line to win outright. For a limited time, new customers who sign up with my promo code JGBETS and bet $5 will receive $250 instantly in bonus bets. Whether you prefer playing player props, same game parlays, or you just want to play that gut feeling in the money line, you can do it all with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using code JGBETS and bet $5 to get $250 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook. Sportsbook with code JG Betts. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only, new customers only, subject to regulatory licensing requirements. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit, wagering, and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Well, not much help for the cold. A stiff breeze around, gusting 30-plus miles per hour this afternoon with mainly rain showers. Winter weather advisory is still in effect for some of the higher elevations to the west and north of us. Overnight tonight, some rain showers, which may mix with a little bit of snow, will drop close to freezing, but I don't think any problems for Friday morning. Partly sunny, breezy in the afternoon, Friday 50, sunny 56 Saturday, sunshine near 70 Sunday. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Robert Half. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Their recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, they know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. Get ready for our iHeartRadio album release party with the Black Keys. Don't miss the iHeartRadio album release party with us, the Black Keys. On the night of the release of the band's new album, Ohio Players. Live 
from the iHeartRadio Theater in Los Angeles. We'll be performing and talking all about our new album tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. Listen on the free iHeartRadio app's Alt Radio station. This election year, there are so many issues that divide us. Which candidate will wind up with the task of trying to unite us? Join us as the future unfolds on News Radio 570 WWNC. Western North Carolina's election station. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch Offs. I could get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to two million dollars in cash and that explains the tuxedo i'm chafing feel the rush with new ultimate dash scratch-offs from the north carolina education lottery must be 18 to play approximate overall odds of winning are one in 3.78 problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543 from the ingle studios this is espn Asheville wpek w225cj fairview wmxf waynesville and iheart radio station the Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Beer City's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingle Studio. It is ESPN Asheville 92.9 FM, 880 AM and 1400. The Sportsocracy. Heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. We're seen everywhere on YouTube. Just go to thesportocracy.com, click the live video link, subscribe to the channel. That way you can join us in the chat. And, of course, you can see us inside the Ingalls studio uh, here on ESPN Asheville. Now, the Buffalo Bills, they made, a, they made a trade. And I'm still trying to I'm, – I'm, try, I'm just trying to figure out where you go from here. Because two years ago, you were a Super Bowl favorite. And now, Josh Allen's just standing around. I will remember oh. you. Stephon Diggs. <sighs> Where'd he go? Gabriel Davis. I you so much, man. <laughs> I love you, bro. This team is just, I mean, they've fallen apart. <laughs> I keep looking at their receiver room just going... That looks like what I would do when I start up Madden and I go, I'm going to blow this team up and have 53 rookies on this team next year. The number one receiver right now for the Buffalo Bills is who? Khalil Shakir. That is correct. Number two is who? Trent Sherfield. He is not on this roster. He's not on the team. Number two would be one, Mr. Curtis Samuel. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Mr. Number three, knife. Mac Hollins. <laughs> also got a smattering of Andy Isabella and KJ Hamler. Let's go. Let's go. First of all, could you get a receiver other than Mac Holland that's taller than five foot ten? Yeah. Josh Allen's gonna look around and go, um, do I play with children? Like what 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 has transpired that every receiver on this team is just itty bitty teeny tiny. I don't I don't know what's happening. I need a receiver. It's so bad. I just I miss Stefan and Gabriel. I just I need somebody to let me. I just I just miss it all. Well, we didn't I didn't think we were gonna have him, but he's called in. So I think we can we can put this on the back burner here because it is one o'clock on a Thursday. Time for Tar Heel time with Jones Angel, the voice of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Um, he is joining us after what was, you know, just not the greatest of uh, showings in the uh, in the tournament. But we're here to put a cap on the season. Jones, are you with us? Uh, here, great hey. to be with you, there and uh, certainly a. Uh, uh, yeah, frustrating way for the year to end, right? For Carolina, such a terrific season. Yeah, um, and to just have yeah, but that, to have the worst <laughs> shooting half of the year and uh, the third worst shooting half in NCAA tournament history for Carolina, um, and lose by two. That, that's a tough pill to swallow when uh, you just couldn't get uh, the ball to go in the basket enough. And um, yeah, a couple things. I I, I didn't think. 
Um, I know Alabama was very proud of its defense after that game. I, I didn't think that Alabama's defense was, was the problem. I, I just thought Carolina couldn't get open shots uh, to go in. You know, they missed a dunk. They missed a wide open layup. Uh, R.J. Davis goes 4 of 20 from the floor and 0 of 9 from 3. Uh, first time in 41 games that he hadn't made a 3 and by far the worst shooting performance of the season for him. Um, so that it, it was just one of those things, right? The ball's got to go in the basket. What do Roy Williams always say? Everything looks better when the ball goes in the basket. And I, and I think you can flip that 180 degrees for Carolina um, in that particular game and really just in that half. Um, and for Carolina still to be within two and, and honestly leaves that game thinking it should have won the game mm-hmm. um, up by three with 90 seconds left and, and not to be able to close it out um obviously was was disappointing um and i think it just shows you how difficult that tournament is right i mean you you've got you you have to survive that type of game you have to survive if you have a key injury like uh like houston did um you you end up having something like that happen and and in the blink of an eye you're out and um you have to survive uh like for kentucky when when a random dude that you've never heard of makes 10 threes um yeah that kind of stuff um, in a one and done tournament, um, makes a difference. And, and so, um, hey, you know, both these, both of these things can be true. Carolina had a terrific season, um, a season that I thought felt more like Carolina basketball as the Tar Heels, um, trying to get themselves moving back in, in the right direction after what has been a turbulent couple of years with the coaching change and with COVID and, and with everything else. Um, and it came to a very disappointing close that I feel like Carolina feels like was not representative of the type of year they had in total. So um, uh, college basketball is hard to win, and, and for Carolina, um, great year, but but certainly not the way that it wanted to end. Yeah, and it could not have gone any worse. The you know, you know what could be, I'll leave it open just a little bit for the last game for R.J. Davis with the North Carolina Tar Heels. A lot of people hoping that maybe he'll come back the rumors have been going around that armando is trying to talk to him and tell him to come back but who knows what the decision is going to be made it was just it was so gut-wrenching to know that one of the greatest tar heels of all time as uh you know as uh the cormac ryan put it in the post game it finished his career this way well certainly this and and this is going to sound like i'm trying to slight RJ and I don't mean it that way. It's certainly one of the greatest seasons that a Carolina player has had ever. And, and RJ's jersey is going to be up in the rafters and it should be. Yep. I mean, he's had a season um, and a career in total, but certainly this year um, that deserves that kind of recognition. I mean, he ends up this season it was the fourth highest scoring season in Carolina history. And the only guys who had more in a single season were Lenny Rosenbluth in 1957, Tyler Hansbrough in 2008, and Antoine Jameson in 1998. And those are three of the best seasons ever, if not the three best seasons ever by an individual uh, in, in total in Carolina history. And so um, RJ had put himself in that type of company um, just an incredible year. And, and I think what made the shooting performance in L.A. so shocking was that it was so out of the ordinary for him. He, he had been so consistent this season with his ability to put the ball in the basket. I mean, you're talking about a guy that was shooting uh, right around 45% from the floor and 41% from three. And for a guard, a guy who's shooting from far away from the basket, those are really impressive numbers. And so for him to then all of a sudden have uh, not just a, a difficult shooting night, but just a horrific shooting night um, was really, really uh, frustrating to see because, again, not representative of the type of season that he had. Um, to his credit, I thought that in the second half, um, you know, and it, there were a couple of times tank in this game where he was visibly frustrated and, and you could tell that, um, the, the lack of the ball going in the basket. And I'm going to tell you, I was there. It was not close. These shots weren't close. They weren't ones that were rattling out. Um, these were ones that were, that were not very close. And so um, to have him have that kind of game was frustrating. Uh, but to his credit, I thought at the end of the game, when he really started getting into the lane and getting fouled and getting to the free throw line, 
that was a big part of the Tar Heels flipping a, a five-point deficit late in that game to have the lead to the point where it looked like they were going to have a good chance to win. And so even in a game where he was not anywhere close to the level of execution as far as shooting the ball um, that he had been most of the year, he still found a way to almost make it happen uh, for Carolina. And so a terrific player, a terrific season, and certainly one that that you hope, uh, if you're a Tar Heel fan, that that will continue uh, for one more year here coming up next season. In our last Tar Heel time, before this, uh, before the 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 Sweet Sixteen game, we were talking about the shooters shooting. We were mm-hmm. talking about Elliot Cadeau not being able to hit threes when he came out at the start of the game and hit two right off the rip. I went. Yes, I put the tank Spencer kiss of death on that whole Elliot Cadeau can't shoot thing, and we're going to win this thing by 20 because there's no way that R.J. Davis is going to continue to shoot like this. Uh, Needless to say, it didn't happen, but um, a lot of people have, and and by people, I mean the the Tar Heel fans in my life, closest to me, have questioned – some of the rotation that happened later in the game, trying to match size on their guards and things and pulling certain guys off the floor. Um, I guess as the, as the follower of the team that you are, uh, did you have a problem with any of that down the stretch? No, and you know Tyler Zeller was, was doing the analyst work for us uh, on this game, and he talked a fair amount about it because Paxson Wojcik played um, several minutes in this game, played more minutes than Elliot Cadeau or Seth Trimble. Um, in this particular game, and I think it was the most minutes he had played since the at Miami game, whenever that was. Tank, I'm not even sure, maybe late January, early February, somewhere in that time period. Um, and it, Paxton, <laughs> Paxton Wojcik was not the reason Carolina didn't win this game. I mean, I, I thought he was out there to do a couple different things. I mean, Alabama was sagging so far off um, Elliot Cato and Seth Tremble um, that it was uh, certainly. Uh, affecting their ability to get to the rim and uh, coaxing a lot of outside shots, which I think was Alabama's goal. Um, I thought Paxson Wojcik then when he was in the game, um, it forced Alabama's defense to be a little more honest and to guard guys one-on-one and um, that way open things up in the post a little bit more. You got Baycott a little more involved, driving lanes were there. Um, and not that plus minus is the end all be all stat, but I do think it's a relevant stat um, at times. And, and which is basically, and I know you know this tank, but the, the plus minus is, well, what, what was the score relative to the time that a particular player was on the court? And so for Pax and Wojcik, Carolina was plus nine um, in that game when he was on the court. For Elliot Cadeau, the Tar Heels were minus 10. For Seth Trimble, the Tar Heels were minus 7. And so, uh, not again, not that that's the end-all, be-all stat, but I do think that shows you a little bit of the reason why Carolina uh, elected to manage its uh, personnel on the floor the way that it did. I I think the argument for, hey, Elliot Cadeau needs to be out there to to get Carolina better shots, I had... My personal opinion is I never thought that Carolina was getting bad shots uh, in this game. Uh, again, I thought the Tar Heels, I mean, I'm sure there were one or two, um, but I thought in total the Tar Heels got pretty clean looks. They, they just weren't going in the basket. And so uh, for the Tar Heels, um, I think that's where, and I think we talked about this, I'm, I'm sure we talked about it throughout the year, and I think we talked about it last week, Tank. I, I think that's where depth matters. That, that you can have some different lineups out there that help you in that individual game and, and give you the best chance in that individual matchup. Now, when things ultimately don't go the way that you want, then it's pretty easy to start picking apart why it didn't happen. And so um, I understand all that, but, but I don't, my personal opinion, I, I don't think that that particular lineup setup was the reason that Carolina didn't win the game. Well, not the ending that we wanted to the season. Like like we say, it's the gut wrench. You're going to have the, 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 the gnashing of teeth and the wringing of hands of, from the Tar Heel fans that are upset that we made the early exit and, well, it didn't end up well for, you know, just, just for the rest of us because, well, we were the only ACC team that didn't make it out of the Sweet 16. And then 
and then we weren't the one that made it to the final four that went to the little brother down the hall and and it makes you feel a certain way but are you uh, congra- uh contractually obligated to uh pull for state or are you believing in the miracle here Oh, uh, I think you can respect and be impressed by uh, the run that State has made. There's no question um, that they're playing really good basketball. Um, you know, DJ Burns has had uh, a terrific. Um, you know, he was he was great in that game against Duke. He's such a uh, difficult matchup for anybody. I, I think um, Purdue is equipped with a big guy that that it will be difficult for Burns to back into. Um, so that'll be interesting to watch. Um, but you, you can respect the run that they've made um, for sure. Um, I, I, they're playing great basketball, and we talked about this, I think, last week, that you do – there are definite times in March where you just get – you get that mojo. And, and I think you saw it with Carolina in 2022. Um, there have been, there've been examples of this through time that a team just kind of just starts working for whatever reason. Um, the ball bounces the right way. You know, I saw some of that Marquette game um, that State played, and, you know, there were some times where State would have the ball stolen from them and it would ping-pong off a couple guys and bounce right to a Wolfpack player sitting underneath the basket, and he'd dunk it. Yep. And, and sometimes stuff like that happens. Um, and for whatever reason, uh, teams have struggled to shoot uh, against State as well, um, and all that adds up to a terrific run. And so – Full credit to them. They're, they're playing great basketball, um, and they have a little bit of that just kind of extra something that helps in March. Um, I do think that UConn and Purdue have proven to be, in total, the best two teams this season. That doesn't mean they're going to win these next matchups, but I think they have been the best two teams all year, um, and they've continued to move through this event pretty impressively themselves. And so, um, should be a fun two games out there in Phoenix, and uh, really looking forward to seeing uh, who ends up cutting down the nets. Uh, it, to see UConn lead every game in the tournament by at least thirty points, at some, I mean, Tank, that's unheard of. Yeah. Um, so it, it is. Uh, it, it has been really impressive to see what they have done. It's been impressive to see how states played. It's been impressive to see uh, Purdue kind of shake that monkey off the back of of some early season or early tournament. Uh, mistakes and miscues and heartbreaks here the last couple of years to, to finally shed that away and get to the Final Four. So th- there's plenty of great storylines and some really good teams that are still playing. No doubt, because the storyline for Alabama would be pulling off the upset that nobody thinks that you can pull off. UConn would be, obviously, let's see if we can uh, you know, win it back-to-back. Purdue with the revenge narrative, uh, <laughs> you know, the redemption story that we saw Virginia pull off after losing mm-hmm. to a 16 seed in the first round. Uh, and then, of course, NC State just, well, here we are. And BJ, and, and, and DJ Burns, uh, uh, I believe he's taken over all of Armando's NIL deals. Uh, I think all the, all the commercials that Armando was doing, I think now we've seen DJ take all of those. So uh, I'm, I'm proud to see uh, him getting the love after you know watching his career start for Winthrop. Yeah, I mean, what he signed with Tennessee and then went to Winthrop yep. and uh, now at NC State, and and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, every starter that State has is a transfer, and I I think that speaks to college basketball now um, is that it, it can the landscape is just so different, and mm-hmm. you know, I talked to Hubert Davis about this some on Monday during the, his final radio show of the year. I asked him, you know, can you still build a program, or do you just have to build a team? And I think the answer is somewhere in between because I think you still, when you're trying to build your program, you're going to have these foundations that you believe in, both on and off the court, as far as styles of play and how you want to try and be successful and then you know how you believe the right way is to consistently build a program that lasts over time. But I, to, to try and have like a three- or four-year plan that's out the window. I mean, that, 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 that doesn't happen anymore. And, you know, just like we were talking about R.J. Davis, I mean, Tank, quite honestly, you look at the top eight guys on Carolina's roster, and, you know, can I say for sure that any one of them will be back next year? And I'm sure some of them will. This is, but no, because that's the way it is now. I mean, Armando Baycott and Cormac Ryan are out of eligibility. I think Harrison Ingram and R.J. Davis both have strong professional aspirations that, that they – 
want to think about. And then, you know, will Seth Trimble and Elliot Cadeau and Jalen Withers and Jalen Washington, how will they handle the portal? And it, you just don't know. And that's just how it is now. That's not something negative about Carolina. That's not something negative about any single school or any player. It, it is just the landscape that college basketball, college athletics in total and college basketball in this discussion is in now. And so, um, yeah, it, it, you can rebuild a team um, pretty quickly in a year and have a totally different look than you did the year before. And I think you saw that also with Carolina to a degree this year. I mean, you still had Armando Baycott and R.J. Davis, who had been stalwarts for Carolina. But uh, I think Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan had as large an impact as anybody this season on Carolina's team. And, and they, of course, were playing for somebody else last year. And so... Um, It is a totally different landscape, and it makes these, like this month or so after the season ends, it it makes it so unpredictable and so fast-moving and just so many changes that are occurring. I know Hubert Davis, you know, was having player meetings Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week where he was going to sit down, I think, with every player on the team and discuss the year, discuss moving forward, et cetera, and get a feel for for where they were heading moving forward. So um, it is certainly a a change from when you and I were growing up, Tank, and and you knew that, oh, that that freshman Vince Carter who didn't play a bunch when he was a freshman, but, man, he's going to be something by the time he leaves, and then all of a sudden he's a part-time starter as a sophomore and then an All-America as a junior. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. No, if uh, the early playing time doesn't happen, it fe- it feels like the guys are going to go. You get you you got to hit it big, and you got to find a guy that fits in early with your scheme if you want to keep him around a long time. I mean, they ESPN did an article over the weekend that I was looking at. It was talking. It, it had a graphic of all of the starting fives of all of the elite eight teams, and it showed where they started. And it was only Purdue and Tennessee were the only ones that had a bunch of guys, like four out of their five starting five. Oh, Duke had mm-hmm. all of their all of theirs, but they, a lot of theirs are young guys. But yeah, it's rare. It's very rare. You got to be able to play the game, be able to mix it well. North Carolina's done it for years, and I don't think there's any reason to doubt that we'll continue to do that. Keep the best of the, it, and then find I- the best in the in the portal. Yeah, and I know we've been going a long time, but I think the catch-22 of that, too, is you talk about playing time early. Like, it's hard to win with freshmen. It's always been hard to win with freshmen, but I think it's even harder now because you have teams that are so much more mature because you have a guy like an Armando Baycott, for example, who stays in college longer because he does have opportunities. He has earning opportunities now in college. And, you know, one of the biggest positives for R.J. Davis is, you know, could he potentially – uh, have a higher earning potential at Carolina than he would if he was in the G League or whatever next year. And, and so you see that now in college basketball where they're – and we've talked about this some, I think, throughout the last year or two, where guys are staying longer, and so you do have – I mean, like, let's take Oakland and Kentucky, for example. There's no doubt that Kentucky had better players, right? I mean, they're going to have four or five guys that are drafted this year mm-hmm. off that team. But Oakland had a bunch of 24- and 25-year-olds out there and at some point, that matters. And so it is, it, is a, it is a unique landscape that college basketball is in right now. And I think some of these coaches are still figuring it out um, because it's new to them as well, uh, trying to figure out the best way to, to put the best possible team together, finding the right mixture of talent, experience, and chemistry, which is, which is not always easy to do. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. That'll do it for Tar Heel time for the season. We'll catch back up with you as we get closer to football season, Jones. Always a pleasure. Looking, yeah, looking forward to it, Tank. Have a great uh, rest of the spring and summer, and I'll uh, look forward to talking with you late summer as uh, we start getting ready for Carolina football. Yes, indeed. Uh, the spring game coming up on the 20th, is that right? Oh, I think that's right, Tank. I have the. De- I think that's the correct date. Looking forward to that here in a couple of weeks, and Certainly will be a, a different look for Carolina. I think, uh, you know, you've got the uh, on Jeff Collins coming on the defensive side uh, to be the coordinator there. Some, ex- some excitement there that Carolina can um, take some steps forward on that side and um, got to see what that offense is going to look like. We've been spoiled with Sam Howell and, and Drake May. And so how do they look 
uh, without one of those terrific quarterbacks. We'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, spring game presented by Wegmans set for April the 20th at 3 o'clock. I'm sure we'll be bringing you the coverage of it here on ESPN. Asheville, I know States is this weekend, and so we're carrying that over on WWNC. Uh, But, uh, Jones, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Thanks, thanks. Talk to you soon. All right, you're in the Sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. What are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs. I could get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to two million dollars in cash and that explains the tuxedo i'm chafing feel the rush with new ultimate dash scratch-offs from the north carolina education lottery must be 18 to play approximate overall odds of winning are one in 3.78 problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543 getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. ZipRecruiter.com slash free. In the 90s, New York detective Louis Scarcella locked up the worst criminals. Putting bad guys away. There's no feeling like it. Then jailhouse lawyers took aim, led by Derek Hamilton. Scarcella took me to the precinct and lied. 20 men eventually walked free. Now, in the Burden podcast, after a decade of silence, Louis Scarcella finally tells his story. And so does Derek Hamilton. Listen to The Burden on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern hospitality touch. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828 774 6343 or Clarissa sells WNC at gmail.com. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. On the weird scale, there's Vegas, there's Florida, and there's Asheville. Let's get weird, Asheville. We're back at the Sportsocracy inside the Ingalls studio. This is ESPN Asheville, and time to get weird. Doesn't get much weirder than uh, than than this. Uh, Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office investigating up in Wisconsin, if you didn't know. Um, something strange found on a golf course, Jeremy. It's the weirdest thing you ever found on a golf course. My ball. <laughs> The dead squirrel that you killed that one time? Was oh, that, no, that, that one was bad. One? Yeah, that was bad. Poor Blinky. Um, <laughs> no, the, the only thing that ever catches me off guard is when I really just falafel one off in the woods. All right. And then I walk out there and go, hey, 
Let's go to jail. Look at that. Well, that. Well, imagine that you're out on the golf course, Jeremy. You hit one of those falafelin shots, and it goes, you know, off the off the dog leg, way too far. You sliced it, you cut it, whatever the damn term is. Uh, and then you're just east of the golf course, over by the pump house, and then you stumble across what this person stumbled across. It's a severed leg. Just a leg. Just, yeah. Hey, there's something over there in the bushes. What is it? Leg. Obviously, the uh, sheriff's, <laughs> sheriff's office investigating right now, but one golfer got quite the surprise that he was not expecting. <laughs> what is happening in Wisconsin where you just had, there's just legs, there's body parts, random ones. I mean, at that point, you just shut everything down, right? You got to shut down the whole golf course for the day. We got to go I looking mean, for the rest of this person. I mean, not necessarily. He couldn't have gotten far. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, what, are we, what are we going section off a fifty foot radius? He's not over there. Yeah, not well, over there. He's probably the one walking in circles. Hey, follow follow that trail. It's not that hard to figure out. Uh all right, I'm going to give you a choice of, <laughs> of which one of my... I have two stories. So which one... Okay, let's, let's go. Do you want uh, the, how Danny McBride watches movies no. or um, plastic surgery... What's that word for when you regret something you did? Regret. Regret. We'll yeah. go with regret. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm interested now. I'd, hopefully this isn't a Louis C.K. moment. Let's hear how Danny McBride watches movies. Danny McBride of the of Eastbound and Down, The Righteous Gemstones, Fries Principles, a whole lot of vulgarity things that are hilarious. He did an interview with GQ. And there is one thing that happens in movie theaters that just really grinds his gears. What do you think that is? Sticky floors. Booze booze danny mcbride does not he does not like booze being served in movie theaters he said i hate it i can't stand it i also don't think it makes sense to combine booze with movies you're gonna have to piddle it doesn't alcohol make you want to get up and get loose you don't want to just sit there drink beer and just be quiet i would have no interest in going to see a movie and just pounding ipas just falafeling falling asleep Mm mm-hmm he then, however, said, if I walked into a movie theater and you handed me weed, that sounds like <laughs> a good <okay>. time. <laughs> Wait a minute. Danny, you are maddeningly inconsistent, my mullet brethren. Um, <laughs> just... I don't know how you don't watch a movie without without cold beers. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you do you drink while you watch movies? Sometimes. I, I, I guess I'm just not. I mean, I'm not about what movie, movie I'm going to see. Like I'm not. Ta- I I usually you know don't take my children to see the latest superhero movie and have to take all the alcohols with me. But oh, stop! You're going to see Paw Patrol pounding IPAs. <laughs> don't don't lie to me. <laughs> this is something about watching like maybe superhero movies. I, okay, yes, superhero movies. I will drink at, but. I was trying to uh, Schindler's I List. Like, probably not no, a great. No, I was thinking goal. back to like uh, when I'd take the kids to see like the animated movies, like Trolls. Oh, that's, like they were five years old, and we were going to see Trolls. I'm not getting drunk during Trolls. They should give you five <laughs> beer tickets just because you bought tickets to that. <laughs> Despicable Me. I don't have to get you know lit to sit through that movie. You are just little girl. <laughs> that's a very good impression that you do. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah um I, I, you I'm, know I'm, obviously i'm not i'm not against the boozes in the theaters that's about the only way you're going to get me in a theater i mean i need you to stop peddling crap I, I need movies to stop being terrible right i did watch oppenheimer though that was a good one. that was good it was that's definitely one you can't drink to you gotta oh, kind of no, pay I attention did. during oh that. no i did drink during that one <laughs> and i kept a nice steady pace and by the end of it i was <laughs> so confused i was gonna say three hours into it you're going i don't know who built the bomb did we drop the bomb or did they drop the bomb and then he got up started singing the gap band and it was all over but the crying what did albert einstein say to him okay i am very confused did he tell him about a nice place to get a hot pocket (laughs) (laughs) some movies you just shouldn't drink to now like star wars that's a fun one (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I would need to be nice and in the bag for that yeah. one. Oh yeah, 
Oh, that would be a fun game to play. Jeremy drinks during movies. I could just see me belligerent. Eight domestic lights. How do they understand the bear? It just goes. And they just, yeah, good bear. Let's do that. <laughs> Stupid. Stop watching stupidity. Jeremy doesn't understand how languages work. See, they can speak the language too. That's how they understand. That's it. not a language. It That's is a language. <laughs> See, you just now you just show, now you just showing your ignorance, ain't you? Ass, about how you feel? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We will go left. Oh, no, left at the next light. Oh, you shut up. This is the sports democracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. <laughs> This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Well, not much help for the cold. A stiff breeze around, gusting 30-plus miles per hour this afternoon with mainly rain showers. Winter weather advisory is still in effect for some of the higher elevations to the west and north of us. Overnight tonight, some rain showers, which may mix with a little bit of snow, will drop close to freezing, but I don't think any problems for Friday morning. Hardly sunny breezy in the afternoon, Friday 50, sunny 56 Saturday, sunshine near 70 Sunday. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stagic. This report is sponsored by Jackson Hewitt. It matters who does your taxes. Why are people saying Hugh yeah to Jackson Hewitt? When you switch to Jackson Hewitt, they will beat what you paid last year on tax prep, even if you filed online. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Get ready for our iHeartRadio album release party with the Black Keys. Don't miss the iHeartRadio album release party with us, the Black Keys. On the night of the release of the band's new album, Ohio Players. From the iHeartRadio Theater in Los Angeles We'll be performing and talking all about our new album Tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific Listen on the free iHeartRadio app's alt radio station Who's leading in the polls? Red or blue? Who's heading to the governor's mansion? How about the White House? Get the latest updates right here on News Radio 570 WWNC. Western North Carolina's election station. I like to be active, and as you get older, I know it because I am older. You're more prone to injury, and I could not get rid of the pain. QC Kinetics patient Diane Richardson talking about how a hiking injury left her in awful pain. No one wants to live in pain. I certainly don't want to live in pain. I don't have time for pain. Diane had heard about regenerative medicine, so she called QC Kinetics and started treatment right away. And the results were incredible. I couldn't believe it. I honestly was skeptical, but the pain went from a 10 to a 0. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in using natural biologics healing properties from your own body to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. There's no surgery, no drugs, and no downtime. The result was phenomenal. I mean, I was not feeling any pain. I'm able to do everything that I want to do. If you have pain from arthritis or injury, this may be the solution you're looking for. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. It was a game changer. Call QC Kinetics, 828-333-9517. That's 828-333-9517. 828-333-9517. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White Haze, Peach Perfect, Scary Berries, and my personal favorite mean green and number three at six percent abv max protect always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over beast unleashed available at your local retailer at ingles we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings.
Nelson. Nelson. I have had enough of you singing. <laughs> like that is that is the truest thing he's ever said. <laughs> it is a sad, sad day for Buffalo Bills fans. Not for me. Ha! Yeah. Sucks to be you. Yep. Enjoy being bad again. Do 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 do. Mr. Jets fans happy. Bill Booty Cheeks, our uh, resident Patriots fan, he's very happy today. Uh, finally planting his flag. Did you see what I was saying? Yeah, but you were saying that before this team was bad. Well, I mean, he has a point. They weren't really a Super Bowl contender. I yeah. mean, I think you have to get to one to be a contender for it. Nah, you don't. Yeah, you gotta do. You can't win a Super Bowl without getting to one. <laughs> <laughs> you said they were a Super Bowl favorite two years ago. That's a weird way to say four years ago. And you just keep coming up small. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I, I feel like you have to look at this Bills team now and just go, we're done now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're not even a playoff team at this point. There's there's no coming back. Uh, I mean, I, I at least I don't see it. There may be some, you know, pie in the sky idea here. To help them win some games, I just I don't know what it could be at this point. Josh Allen is, well, I mean he's Will Smith, right? He's standing he's just looking in the around, living room, like, looking around, going, "Where did everybody go? Hey, where did all my friends go?" <laughs> I feel like you have to look at. Have you looked at the cap ledger for the the, the Bills? No, going into this twenty twenty four season. No, the three most expensive players on this team are who? Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. Um, who's the next one? Tredavious White and Stephon Diggs. Oh, the two of them you don't a, play you, there you anymore. S- you see a problem with that? Because <laughs> you aren't too. It's, I, I just look at this team and go, you're not making you're, – you're done. Mm-hmm. This is a two-year reset. And, I mean, the roster is just so barren of talent. It's so barren of talent. You have no pass catchers. Mm-mm. The line doesn't make me feel hunky dunky, and now I think your defense has been killed. So I'm just looking at Buffalo, going, "You're going to get picked apart by the Jets if they stay healthy, and you're going to get obliterated by the Dolphins." And now the Buffalo Bills are the third best team in their division. And how close are they to to the New England Patriots? How close are the Bills to the Patriots? Yeah. No. Oh, they're still a. I mean, they still have Josh Allen. <laughs> Oh, it's Josh Allen by himself makes you better than what New England is. No right doubt. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're Let a me risk you. to be the last team in this division, but I'm just curious what the... All right. I tell you either the Bills or the Patriots are going to win Super Bowl this decade. Either, neither, both. Which one is it? Neither. Take either out of it. Oh, and I had to pick one? Yeah. I'd take New England. I wouldn't even think about it. Really? I would. I wouldn't even think about it. Mm. Because you're 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 officially to the point where your build is broken. Because the Josh Allen deal gets real expensive. Was it forty seven million? Something like that. He is in twenty twenty four, he'll be thirty point one million. Then it balloons to forty three point three next year. Goes to sixty four in twenty twenty six. 56.7 and then he's got a 48.2 in 2028 yeah i just don't see you're wasting the last cheap year because this is not a competitive football team no i don't like your coach i've never liked your coach and i feel like he's a dead man walking because there's no path to me that you look at and now look the afc east plays an easier schedule this year than they did last year last year was as bad as i think i've ever seen mm-hmm uh, Danny Fence fan said, don't forget about Von Miller. Yeah, he's four. And I feel like the underpaid guys on that team are going, hey, how about you play more than 300 snaps this year and we can talk mm-hmm. about you being the second highest paid player actually still on this team. Right. That was a terrible deal when it got signed. I hated it then. I hate it even more now. Because it went exactly as I thought it was going to. Von Miller's going to get, the what, what was it, $80 million or something like that in total? I don't remember what the total it deal was. It was somewhere in that neighborhood. I know it was a lot, and yeah. it took him until he was real old. Yeah, and it it's just it w- it was an insane move to make for me to give him that contract to begin with, and then he just has played hurt or been hurt the entire time. It is amazing to me how quickly this team fell apart. 
And is this your this is your poster child for paying your quarterback? Well, I mean, you had to pay Josh Allen. He's he's elite, but you have to be able to draft well. Mm-hmm. I mean, the difference between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Buffalo Bills, Kansas City drafts well, Buffalo doesn't. They don't. I mean, look how many Kyer Elams are on this roster mm-hmm. that you just go, that didn't make any sense at the time, and it looks 10 times worse now. And they just don't hit on anybody. And I, I, I don't know what nice I'm supposed to say here. You got absolutely robbed, I think, in this deal with the Texans. I get why you moved the pick to next year because you weren't getting high-level capital for a guy that's 30 years old and, and a malcontent. You overplayed your hand. And then when he started trolling Josh Allen on Twitter, that really signaled to everybody, oh, yeah, this is, this is untenable. Yeah. How uh, many teams in the AFC do you think are better than Buffalo right this minute? Ooh. Um... Because I'll go Dolphins, Patriots, the AFC North, uh, the Texans, the Colts, the Jaguars, the Chiefs, the Raiders, Chargers are close. So I'd put them at 12. Did you say, the, you said the Patriots are better? No. Oh. I thought you did. No, I said the Dolphins, the Jets, the AFC North, the Texans, Colts, Jaguars, Chiefs, Raiders. Yep. And I'm not sure they're close to any team I just said. Mm-hmm. I mean, this will be a great case study in how far will an elite quarterback actually take you. With an elite quarterback, you can go far. But you got to have other pieces around him to make it matter. I mean, what, is, what else do you feel good about with this team? Nothing. I mean, James Cook, maybe. The well, line's not terrible. A running back. Oof. I don't think their line's terrible. Other than that, I don't have a real good thing to say. Oh, apparently I did say New England. I didn't I, mean I, that. I think you did. It's, <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't the only one that heard it. Um, yeah, you can't I, – I don't feel like you can get after the passer all that well anymore. I feel like that's kind of faded away. Not to say that there aren't good players on that on that team. It's just – The really defensive line well. is fine. I hate the back half. You quarterback great. Everything else can be a question mark. And when I brought this up to Sports Freak Brian Hall earlier, he said, well, the offseason's not over. What are you going to add to this that's going to change anything? Mm-hmm. Do you have any money to spend? Not really. I mean, this was a full reset. I mean, and you a- look at just look at who they play next year. All right, so you get home games, obviously, against the entire division. I would say if you're lucky, you win two of those three. Mm-hmm. I'm going as rosy colored glasses here as I can. Yes. You play the Jaguars, 49ers, Chiefs at home. I do not see a path. You beat any of the three of those. Cardinals and the Titans. So we'll say you go four and four at home. Mm -hmm. This is best case scenario. On the road, I'll say you beat New England in Foxborough, but you've shown over the years that that's no foregone conclusion. You're not beating the Jets at home. You're not beating the, the, the Dolphins in Miami. And your other six road games, just wait till you hear the six names I'm about to say. Houston Texans, Indianapolis Colts, L.A. Rams, Seattle Seahawks, Baltimore Ravens, Detroit Lions. Yikes. I don't know that there's a win in that. Yeah, you might get, the, what, the Colts? Maybe. I don't know how. I don't know how. I, they're going to run the ball down your throat. And defensively, I don't really know how you're going to score on them. Mm-hmm. Th- this is not going to go well. <laughs> no. It... It's it's not, and the question is: Did you did you pull the rip cord too early here? No, you had to. Did you was your hand forced? Well, the Stefan Diggs thing had gotten really tenuous behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. There was no doubt. As soon as he opened his mouth on Twitter, I looked at that and went, "He's not going to be on this roster week one," because I saw that a couple of days ago. And now it's it's almost like fights with your spouse. It's one thing when you fight behind closed doors. It's another when you fight in front of the kids at the dinner table or you fight at dinner parties with your friends. That's when you know it's over, when you're embarrassing each other in public. And that was a bad sign, but you were already halfway down this rabbit hole anyway. I mean, this was just the, this was just the icing on the cake. 
Now you don't have a corner on this team that anybody feels good about. The defensive line is way thinner than it was. And you have no weapons whatsoever. I'm not scared of Josh Allen by himself. Oh, great. He's going to run 17 times a game. For He runs for 1,000 yards. And so what? It's over. Yeah. It's one over. man. One man cannot win in this league alone. Josh Allen may be an elite quarterback, but you got to put something around him to help you win games, to try to contend for a division, and you just missed your window. You had a three-year window. You got as far as you could. The question is, does this Buffalo Bills organization take a step back like we saw after after the 90s? You still have the quarterback – I mean, they didn't make the playoffs for like 16 years or something like that. I know. I'm not trying to predict that it's going to be that long, but it's going to be a hell of a struggle to try to rebuild this team, especially with with the the guys calling the shots that you have. I'm curious how close you can get to this. Okay. DraftKings Sportsbook right now, what is the over-under on wins for the Buffalo Bills? Eight and a half. Higher. Ten and a half. It's ten and a half. There is zero shot that this team wins ten and a half games. Zero. Mm-hmm. I can't believe it's that high. I'm, I'm. I can't believe it's still on the board. After oh, the Stephon Diggs, of course Diggs it's on thing. the board because uh, DraftKings Sportsbook is the ultimate place for you to bet. They're not going to take things off the board. They're here for you, no matter what it is that you want to wager. If you want to take that over under ten and a half. On Buffalo, I would go under. That's just me. Mm-hmm. You can do that, and you can do it here in the Tar Heel State from the sanctity of your mobile phone. For a limited time, new customers who sign up with our promo code WPEK and bet $5, you'll receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. Whether you prefer player props or same-game parlays or you just want to ride this with the Buffalo Bills, whatever it is, you can do it all with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using code WPEK and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code WPEK. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Eight, call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only, new customers only. Subject to regulatory licensing requirements. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit wagering and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. Is that one of those things that I can I can I can bet it down? Like I can get better odds if I can slide it down to six and a half? Um I just question later in the year. Sure. You can't do it right now. All it's right. it's just a win okay. special right now. There you go. There you go. And you're taking a little risk. Hey, who knows? Maybe maybe they do make a move on a on a receiver. I'm gonna mean? say they I don't, don't care that was for Justin Jefferson. I don't think I would take the over with Justin Jefferson. I really don't. I don't think I would take the over with Justin Jefferson. Because I'm just looking at the conference going, okay, um, in my earlier, way too early power rankings, you play seven of the top ten, and you're not one of them. And you're less of one of them now than you were before. Yep. Nobody circles the drain like the Buffalo Bills. This March, Wendy's has some amazing deals on their hamburgers made with fresh, never frozen beef. Like a juicy Dave single for a buck and a fresh $2 Dave's double with an app offer. It's such a good deal, we wrote a little ditty about it. Get it for a buck. Dave single, Dave single, order in the app. Dave single, Dave single, get it for a buck. Choose wisely, choose Wendy's official hamburger for March Madness. Limited time offer. Participating U.S. Wendy's. See offer details and redeem the Wendy's app. Account registration required. Fresh beef available in the contiguous U.S. and Alaska. Doug Gottlieb here. March is here. That means chick days. Planning your garden and college basketball. Just like in basketball, every team needs its MVP. When it comes to team members who go above and beyond, Tractor Supply has the winning lineup. Our home team at Tractor Supply is excited to support your hometown. We're proud to be part of the excitement of college basketball tournament season, and our home team looks forward to serving your hometown. Because every day is game day at Tractor Supply. GimmeTheVin.com has made it fast. We've made it easy. And we're the only five-star BBB-rated car dealer out there. Sell us your car. GimmeTheVin.com. So easy you can do it in your underwear. In this week's marketer's report. 
We learn about the value of local influencers in uncertain times. From Allison Griffin, head of marketing at State Farm. The economy is tough for everyone. And taking a step back and understanding the pain that your customers are currently going through because of a tough environment is really important. We have 19,000 agents across the country, and they understand what's going on in those very unique communities. iHeart has such a broad broadcast reach that is local, connected, and for us to be able to touch customers with a local feel but at a national scale is so efficient and important for us. As the number one audio company, iHeart Media gives marketers access to all, from national to local. Every audience, live conversations, trusted influencers, and the insights and data you need to grow. Not just a media company, iHeartMedia is your access company. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. At Ingalls, whether we're celebrating Friday Night Rivals, televising college basketball games, bringing the Fan Fest to semi-pro soccer, or taking you out to the ball game at your minor league park, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel shops. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. We are back in the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. We want to remind you to follow us on all the social medias at the Sportsocracy. Um, coming up after the top of the hour, daily draft time, we'll talk about the, uh, or we will draft our overrated underrateds for the, uh, upcoming nfl year thanks underrating the houston texans no big deal okay it's okay i'll make up <laughs> underrating yes i'm underrating them if they're not at one you're underrating them no they can be at two you can have them behind kansas city yeah i don't agree with you but you do it yeah i feel like you got them more at like seven yeah i'm going top three what the hell top was four. that noise you just yeah, made you know sound like you're gonna be robbing banks in the 20s yeah. nice nah, yeah hey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, screwing people out of money for years. <laughs> um, what uh, what's the latest on the the mock draft situation? Uh, so we have a handful of teams left. It looks like that is going to be our show tomorrow. Okay, so we're trying to find uh, someone to represent a team. Yes, uh, we've got. I will have. To, I know the Browns are still out there. The Texans are still out there. I will be the Buffalo Bills. As soon as they traded Stefan Diggs, I went, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. How would Fluster Damas save this expansion franchise with a really good quarterback? Oh, there's a way. There's a way. I will get somebody to trade me a pick to get up there and get one of the remaining quarterbacks. <laughs> I do believe it will. All right, so we're going to be attempting a uh, fan draft tomorrow on the program. And so as we make the picks, uh, one of the members of every team has to have a subscription to Walk the Mock. It's I've gone down every rabbit hole. That's just the way it is. I think it's like three bucks a, a month or something like that. It is the best mock draft website, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Only one of you need it, and we will have a Discord server where we can all chat and talk about trades and things like that. Uh, but that will be tomorrow. So that'll basically be the whole show. If you mm-hmm. have draft questions, you can put them in the YouTube chat. We will talk three hours of NFL draft tomorrow. Nice. And we won't pour over all of the picks. We'll we'll really dig into the first round and then interesting things as they come up. Mm-hmm. All right. So, and we'll so. shout out all of you. And if hey, you want to say, uh, could you say hi to Arlene for me and tell her that I, uh, that, that uh, Daddy's coming home? Uh, you can take that whichever way you want to. Mm-hmm. You know which way I meant it. So there's that. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, it'll be daily draft time over and underrated for the upcoming NFL year. 
This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Well, not much help for the cold. A stiff breeze around, gusting 30-plus miles per hour this afternoon with mainly rain showers. Winter weather advisory is still in effect for some of the higher elevations to the west and north of us. Overnight tonight, some rain showers, which may mix with a little bit of snow, will drop close to freezing, but I don't think any problems for Friday morning. Partly sunny, breezy in the afternoon, Friday 50, sunny 56 Saturday, sunshine near 70 Sunday. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Jackson Hewitt. It matters who does your taxes. Why are people saying Hugh yeah to Jackson Hewitt? When you switch to Jackson Hewitt, they will beat what you paid last year on tax prep, even if you filed online. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. This spring, check carpets off your spring cleaning list with Zero Res Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. Mention ESPN Asheville and you'll get three rooms of carpet cleaned for only $129. Book online at ZeroResAsheville.com. Asheville Smiles has been featured in national publications like Good Housekeeping and Woman's Day. And check out this five-star Google review. My dental experience was wonderful. I cannot say enough about Dr. Merrill and her amazing team at Asheville Smiles Cosmetic and Family Dentistry. Dr. Merrill took time to explain everything. She made me feel relaxed and confident that I was in good hands. I apologize for those tears at your office. Those were tears of joy. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Dr. Merrill, for the hope to get my smile back. Check out Asheville Smiles on online at AshevilleSmiles.com. Our state's future begins with our students. That's why the North Carolina Education Lottery has contributed over $10 billion to education. Through scholarships, school construction, support staff, and pre-K programs, lottery dollars move our state forward, helping students become the best versions of themselves. Visit movingncstudentsforward.com and share how your student or school community has benefited for a chance to earn $2,000 for your story. Must be 18 to play. Problem Gambling Helpline 8 Seven 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 one eight five five four three. From the Ingle Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. The Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Beer City's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to... Get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingle Studio. And a welcome back into the Ingle Studio here on ESPN Asheville. 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. The Sportsocracy is heard everywhere you go on the iHeartRadio app, seen everywhere on YouTube. Go to thesportsocracy.com, click the live video link. Subscribe to the channel so you can join us in the chat. Get your thoughts in on all of the talk of the day in the NFL. As uh, we're looking at, well, the state of things now for one team has gone completely in the tank. The uh, Buffalo, ba- Buffalo. I don't even know what I was going to say I, right there. I'm really curious because yeah. there were a whole lot of there were a whole lot of choices there. There was there was, there was a lot of words that jumbled up in my head all at once that was i was trying to say the buffalo bills are circling the wagons and i wanted to turn them into the buffalo baggins for some reason like they're i don't know a character from the lord of the rings and you know what i heard the entire time you were talking right there what don't do crimes don't do crimes that's right uh don't do crimes coming up later on in this hour but now it's time for the daily draft and after all of the uh you know the the tanking the punting if you will i know you hate it when i use that term for nfl teams the punting that is being done here no you ju- it's Bills. not that i hate using <laughs> that term it's you use it in the wrong times <laughs> okay <laughs> like buffalo this is not tanking if you were tanking you would be trying to add young players to the roster you're just looking at everything you have done and going, oh, no. This is like the Buffalo Bills at this point. I love analogies. And I like coming up with them off the top of my head because they're way funnier that way. The Buffalo Bills at this point are like the thrice-divorced dad with a mullet. Yes, I do understand that that does actually describe me. Mm-hmm. Who They lost all their money. They got no more money. They still got a sweet Camaro, bruh. And now they have the the single guy apartment where the television is sitting on a TV stand or on a TV tray. Excuse me. That's where Buffalo's at. Yes. 
I can't afford anything else. I got to get back on the old feet. Made some bad bets on the Buffalo Bills, and now I'm uh, well, I'm seeing a lovely lady. Her name's Cheryl. Uh, <laughs> she's a, she works at the Cracker Barrel. She cares about people. Uh, so to save us the time from having to talk about them again, I'm gonna take first first pick in this one, and Let's I'm go. and I'm taking first pick overrated Buffalo Bills. As Jeremy said in the latter part of the last hour, right now on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, the over under on wins for them is ten and a half. You should take that. Take the under right now. Don't even think about it because that number's going to change quick. No doubt. Get it while you can. At 10 and a half, that means that Vegas currently believes that the Buffalo Bills are a top 10 team in the NFL. And that could not be further from the truth. That one is false. So I'll go Buffalo Bills overrated for my number one selection. Well, I mean, I think th- since you took Buffalo, I believe that makes it really obvious who my first pick's going to be. Yes. I'll go over on the Houston Texans at nine and a half. Would you like to hear a list of other teams that are at nine and a half? The Miami Dolphins, the Atlanta Falcons, the New York Jets. Mm, don't think there's another one at nine. There's a lot at, ten, a lot at eight and a lot at ten. Mm-hmm. Do you or do you not believe more in the Texans than any team I just said? Yes. By a lot. Mm -hmm. By a whole mess. Quite a large portion, yes. So, I mean, for me, Houston is the most underrated team, uh, according to futures, and these are all coming directly off the DraftKings Sportsbook. Yes. Now, okay, my next one is not going to be real popular, but every time I see this number, it just makes me go, do you care to run that by me one more time? It's the Green Bay Packers. Ten and a half is too many wins. That's too many wins. Green Bay is sitting at ten and a half. So are the Eagles and the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Stop. <laughs> okay? Like, this is what drives me crazy about quarterbacks. They're either awful or they're awesome, and there's no in-between. Nobody can just look at a quarterback and go, he's good. He's not great, and he's not great, and we're losing our minds on Jordan Love. Losing it. Mm -hmm. I I, I can't remember now who it was, but somebody put out a graphic of teams that would tap out on their quarterback for Caleb Williams. There were five that wouldn't even think about it. It was Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, and Jordan Love stop if the chicago bears would give them the number one pick for caleb williams they would do it so fast that jordan love would literally not even know he was on an airplane by the time he was in the air stop i just think we're losing our minds on this i i do i I don't like what green bay did in the offseason i'm not totally sold that i'm gonna love what they do in the draft i keep hearing weird names that don't make a lot of sense and I just think ten and a half is too much. You're putting this team in a in a position that's not fair. And yes, I understand. I'm the guy that often says fair shows up in your town once a year with funnel cakes and Ferris wheels. But you're putting an expectation on this team that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, ten is a lot, especially looking at their schedule next year. Oh, uh, who's, North, who's that got on it? The North is not going to be easy by any stretch. Well, you I got mean, two Minnesota. of the lines that are going to be evil. Yeah, you got New Minnesota. So you give them two against Minnesota, maybe split with the Bears. I don't know. Would you give them a split with the Lions? I no, wouldn't. I would not. So that's three wins there, but that's also three losses that you have to count. And then you do get the Cardinals, the Colts, Saints. Where is the Colts game? Uh, it's in Green Bay. Okay. Um, you know, there's a matchup with the Seahawks and the Titans. But other than that, you go home tough games are going to be the Texans, the San Francisco 49ers, the Miami Dolphins, away games, Jacksonville Jaguars, Los Angeles Rams, Philadelphia Eagles, and that Seattle game is on on the road. 
That's that's enough that's losses a lot of for me to be right. Yeah, that's a lot of dings, and that doesn't add up to ten wins. Green Bay is they were very high on my list for the overrated teams going into next year. Uh, as far as hmm, as far as the AFC East is concerned, there is but one team that I'm staring at going. You know, the number's not terribly high, but it seems a little low, especially in the wake of what just went down with the Buffalo Bills. And it's your New York Jets, Jeremy. You think their number's too low? I think their number is too low. Okay. You don't? At nine and a half, I get it's pushing it. But now how do you not get there? Um, because they're the New York Jets. <laughs> I mean, is that... Uh, do I need a better reason than that? I actually think that number's spot on, personally. Really? I mean, look, I think the Jets are the most talented team in this division. But I, do I trust it enough to bet it? No. No. Don't trust it enough? That you'll find a way to lose this division to the Miami Dolphins. I mean, in the words of the great poet, George Michael, I'm never going to dance again. <laughs> Guilty feet have got no rhythm. <laughs> Though it's easy to pretend. Uh-huh. I know you're not a fool. You know way too many words to that song. Should have um, known better than to cheat a friend. Oh my gosh. Waste the chance that I've been given. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm never going to dance again the way I dance with you. <laughs> okay? Yeah. I know I said it last year. And the fact that you didn't know that the lyrics were on my screen. No. Yeah. Why are they on your screen? Because I searched it for that joke. (laughs) You've been planning that for a while? About 10 seconds. That's about how long it takes. See, people that can type more than six words a minute, we can crank that out. As soon as the idea hits, let's go. Can't do it. You knew you were a witch if you can. Uh, Yeah, I'm I'm going Jets. Underrated. Well, you know, I, I I would have felt better about my Jets before you just put the Tank Spencer kiss of death on them. Well, I mean, sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to put the Tank Spencer kiss of death on things. And how about you put it on your own team? Leave my team out of it. I'm a, I'm I'm, I'm going to put it on somebody else's team. Uh oh. Yeah. Only maybe this time I'll go the other way. Because I'm starting to think that the Baltimore Ravens are overrated. At least as far as Vegas is concerned. Their number's at 11 and a half. Which is the most in the league. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be some regression there. I know that they found, they always find a way to fill the holes. Derrick Henry's coming in, so that's, you know, it's going to add something to the backfield. Fact or fiction, Baltimore looks more in 2024 like they did in 2021 than they did in 2023. Sure. I don't see a way that you don't. Yeah. I will never understand how a team that is this good at drafting all the positions that are so hard to draft are this bad at drafting the easiest one. I've never understood it, and I never will. They're the worst receiver drafting team in the league, and it's not even kind of close. And now that's your biggest downfall. You've got one guy that I even kind of believe in. And I love Zay. I, I, look, I said I would have taken Zay over every receiver in the draft last year. Mm-hmm. But he's not enough by himself. And he is little, and it's always going to be hard when you're that size to be the number one. And, I mean, what are you supposed to do? Who's out there that you could go get? I mean, it's not like it's not like Cincinnati's going to go, hey, let's give you T. Higgins. Uh, you tried that, and they hung up on you. Mm-hmm. So I just I, I'm there with you. I don't, and that's where I got with Houston, is I'm looking around going, man, the AFC has regressed a lot in the offseason. The funny thing is I don't feel like the NFC's gotten all that much better. Mm-hmm. It's weird how that happened. But I, I, I'm, I'm kind of there with you. Yeah, I think 11 and a half is a lot. Yeah, it's not that I don't like them. It's not that I don't think they're talented. I just, 11 and a half is way, not way too much, but it's it's too much. Can I ask a question? What is the real difference between the Baltimore Ravens and the Buffalo Bills? 
the real difference between them. I mean, the defenses aren't even comparable, in my opinion. Statistically, they have been for a long time. They both have great quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Now they both kind of struggle with with weapons. Have a little bit of turnover on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest difference to me is that Baltimore actually drafts well. And they do win every other decade. But I mean, those two teams both have a lot of hype and a lot of bluster seemingly every year. And Buffalo gets a lot of hate, and Baltimore never really catches that. Yep. Well, they have more excuses. At least they have in the last few years. All the excuses have been injuries. I was going to say they have two Super Bowl rings. Well, There's been a whole lot of letdowns outside of those two years. But none of the stink true. ever really attaches to you. The funny thing is that the stink doesn't attach to the Ravens. It sticks directly to Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. Because I hear people rail on him all the time. I never hear it about Harbaugh. I never hear it about any of the other coaches. I never hear it about the front office. Yeah. I will say you hear it r- r- more rare about Harbaugh. But Harbaugh's got a lot of critics. Especially especially in the fandom. Not real vocal ones. Yeah. There are a lot of people who think he feel feel like he takes way too many chances, you know, kind of as the 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 gambler kind of a kind of an aspect to him. He's taking a lot of heat, but for you're right for the most part, it's it's always Lamar. Uh, ben Whitley said, "Don't sleep on the Patriots' inability to draft receivers." <laughs> That's a good point you got there, sir. It's very good. That is a good point. That's a very good point. You are in the sportsocracy, and this is CSPN Asheville. It's about that time to take a break so before jeremy has a chance to say it we'll let him just have the little break to think about his next two picks here over underrated for the upcoming season looking at each nfl team so far i've got the buffalo bills in the overrated category baltimore in the overrated category and the new york jets in the underrated category jeremy has taken the houston texans who are now his number one team in the league as the underrated team Overrated for the Green Bay Packers. What's next? Stick around, find out. Doug Gottlieb here. March is here. That means chick days. Planning your garden and college basketball. Just like in basketball, every team needs its MVP. When it comes to team members who go above and beyond, Tractor Supply has the winning lineup. Our home team at Tractor Supply is excited to support your hometown. We're proud to be part of the excitement of college basketball tournament season. And our home team looks forward to serving your hometown. Because every day is game day at Tractor Supply. (laughs) What are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs. I could get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to $2 million in cash. And that explains the tuxedo. I'm chafing. Feel the rush with new Ultimate Dash scratch-offs from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning are 1 in 3.78. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. In the 90s, New York detective Louis Scarcella locked up the worst criminals. Putting bad guys away. There's no feeling like it. Then jailhouse lawyers took aim led by Derek Hamilton. Scarcella took me to the precinct and lied. 20 men eventually walked free. Now, in the Burden Podcast, after a decade of silence, Louis Scarcella finally tells his story, and so does Derek Hamilton. Listen to The Burden on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Last season on the Choosing Sides F1 podcast, we established unequivocally that F1 is the pinnacle of motorsports. We did, but honestly, I was left with more questions than answers, Tony. I'm Tony Cameron Brown, a tech, culture, and F1 commentator. And I'm Michael Costa, comedian... From The Daily Show. Join us for season two of Choosing Sides F1 and get all of the answers. All of them? All of them. Listen to Choosing Sides F1 on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 
or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White haze, each perfect, scary berries, and my personal favorite, mean green. And number three at 6% ABV, Max Protect. Always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over. Beast Unleashed, available at your local retailer. The Sportsocracy. These guys are a f***ing disgrace. And we are back, and it is uh, the second half of the Daily Draft here. Overrated or underrated for the upcoming NFL season? Jeremy Green, it is your selection, sir. I can't believe you didn't take this one. Okay. Over four and a half for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, I, th- I Easiest it. bet I think I've ever seen in my life. I considered it. Easiest bet I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Just having a competent NFL head coach, which I do think Dave Canales is. Yes. That's too low. Um, and, and I thought about just pairing it with uh, another team in the, the, uh, the NFC South, mm-hmm. but they're pretty realistic on all of you. Tampa yeah, Bay and New like Orleans eight. are at eight and a half. Mm-hmm. Atlanta's at nine and a half. I don't really have a problem with any of those. I think Tampa Bay's too high. Mm-hmm. Then again, I think New Orleans is too high. I don't believe in Dennis Allen. I don't believe in Todd Bowles. Yep. But do I believe in enough to wager it? No. No, you shouldn't. Uh, somebody said that earlier in the chat. Uh, whatever number is too high for Tampa Bay. Now you can, Eight and you a can half. go for that if you want, but that team won nine games last year. I'm not, I'm not putting my money on it, that they won't do it again, that they won't be in that realm again. I'm not doing it this high because I don't have to. Mm-hmm. There are others that make far less sense. And Carolina to me is just, I think it's revisionist history. It's not a super, super popular team on the national landscape. So I feel like they have to put the number low to try to get even action on both sides. Mm -hmm. I feel like Carolina should be about six and a half. And that's what I'm looking for here is teams that I think are a full game plus on the wrong side of the number. Yep. It's just like Green Bay. I'm not trying to, to, to do on Green Bay. The fact that you're telling me there are three teams in the NFL that have a higher number than yours. I mean, there are a handful that are tied with you, but that doesn't make any sense to me. Because that's putting you in the top eight in the NFL, and I just don't think you're there. Yep. Carolina Panthers at four and a half, correct? Yes. All right, they have a game against the Washington Commanders. Win. They have one against the Denver Broncos. Win. Both of those are on the road. I think they'll win two or three in the division. Two or three in the division. So if they win three in the division, that already already puts them over. Uh, and then they have home games with the Cardinals Win. and the Giants. Win. There you go. Carolina might be the best bet on the board. Could be. They could be the best bet on the board. What's your oh, next? Oh, you know, that's funny because there's another one yeah. that I also think is underrated. The Las Vegas oh, Raiders. Shoot. Was, Six and a half is dumb. Take that one next. Dumb, 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 the dumb, dumb. <laughs> I was staring at it, hoping that you wouldn't do it, so I get to say it. <laughs> oh, I'm not giving you the satisfaction. <laughs> you have defecated on that team for way too long. You don't get to. You weren't here in the bad times. You stay away the mustachio. No, times. It, but but the, but that was the next one that jumped out to me because it's insane. Because it's crazy. Six and a half. You should win three games in the division, just solely off beating the Broncos twice and, be, and splitting with the Chargers. Mm-hmm. And that's me on the low side. I think you could beat them both twice. I'm not sure you don't win a game against Kansas City because you somehow find a way to do that every single year. But the Raiders just feel stupidly low. Man, that's not that's not an easy schedule. No, the stretch. schedule's brutal. The, so the AFC West plays what the AFC East did last year. Yeah. And it's gnarly. 
I mean, they do have they do have a game against the Carolina Panthers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. Well, and the Atlanta like Falcons, the other obviously. team out of that god awful division, obviously. Um, but the rest of it, I mean, Browns, Steelers, Jaguars, those are all home games. None of that sounds as daunting to me as it does to you. And then you go Ravens, Bengals, Dolphins, Rams. It's not easy. Notorious, I didn't say it was terrible. I just, it's not easy. Notorious B.I.G. says because they don't know who the quarterback's going to be. I, I'm not going to tell you that that's wrong. I will tell you that I don't care. I think Farva could win seven games with what the Raiders currently have. That defense is going to be markedly improved, mm-hmm. especially when they had Quinion Mitchell in the draft, and I just walk away and go, they win. <laughs> they, Christian Wilkins and Quinion Mitchell, you win. It's great offseason. Let's go. Raider Nation. Your turn. I took my two favorite ones. Oh I, shoot! I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Can I take uh, Toledo over unders here? Is because I feel <laughs> like I've already won. Toledo. What's the idea? over under three? I think Toledo's at three and a half, maybe next year in the MAC. Probably. Who knows? Joshua Penix said we're low on the cards. It's not really that we're low on the cards. It's that I know you're. I know exactly what they're doing, which is exactly what they should be doing. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to lead to a lot of wins, but it'll lead to a markedly improved team. You're going to start seven rookies. You also got to understand, we don't know what the schedule is. So if you play Arizona in the first month, I'm probably going to like that. Mm-hmm. If you play them in the last month, I'm probably not going to like that as much. No. Okay. Well, you took my next favorite one off of the board, which I don't like a whole lot. God, you're already taking ones you don't like a whole lot? Well, I mean, th- I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that was was my next favorite. I'm going with the New York Giants. And I believe they're overrated. Their number's at six and a half. That's too many. And I think that's just, no. That is a god-awful team. I don't believe in anything that's happening right now with that team. You draft a quarterback like there's rumors that you may do. Be careful. I don't think I like that either. It's lying season. I get it. I get it. They may not be looking at a quarterback. That's that's fine. Oh no, I didn't say they weren't looking at a quarterback. Okay. I just don't think they're looking at the quarterback you think they are. Okay. I I mean I don't I don't even care which one it is. I don't care if it's the, we're going to trade up to number one and get Caleb Williams. I still don't think I'm liking this team at all. I yeah I would not like that. I think it's way more likely that the Giants are the team that makes a maneuver late mm-hmm. in the first or early in the second and winds up with Michael Penix. Okay. Uh, under six and a half. If there was a way to bet what city Michael Penix played in, I would have a just heavy wager on New York. New York. Have the Jets looked at him too? Yes. Okay. Well, let's – one one place you'd be a you could you could be a starter real soon. The other one you might have to wait a couple of years, but and then he'll be forty five years old by then, and then he'll be retired. He'll never he's only twenty four right now. Is he really? <laughs> he's been in college football for ten years. How's that possible? Hey, so has Armando Baycott. <laughs> Armando Baycott and I graduated high school in the same year. Yeah, I was gonna he say he somehow but, just left Carolina. I was gonna say, but he's thirty two years old. No doubt my last selection here i'm gonna go with another six and a half line the tennessee titans i think that's too few i I looked at that one too i think i couldn't get there i think the titans are underrated i mean but that's how much i believe in brian callahan this is how much i believe in the maturation process the growth of will levis You have two wide receivers now. Maybe Traylon Burks playing as the three comes along. You got something to work on here. You got two running backs that I kind of like. That defense, I think, is going to be nasty. I don't think they're going to win their division. They're not going to threaten in that division. But six and a half is way too low to me. That's more of an eight-win team. I can't say way too low because I think they will go seven and ten. Okay, that's the reason I didn't take it. Mm-hmm. Is because I couldn't get to a place of okay. It's set. That's where I look at it. These okay. If I bumped the number up one spot, would I bet the other way? 
And if they were seven and a half, I would take the under. Mm-hmm. Because I think there are things that could happen that they would wind up four and 13. You, all you need is Will Levis to not develop. And that, that terrifies me. I agree with you. I think mm-hmm. six and a half is too low. Mm-hmm. And I would take the over. I'm just not so vehement about it. And there are two more that I really am. Uh, under 10 and a half for the Dallas Cowboys, because that is one of the top five most insane things I've ever seen in my life. Look at that schedule and tell me how they're going to come out of it. Uh, 11 and 6. I'll wait. With two receivers on the team and an offensive line that is somewhat in shambles. Oh, and you have a new defensive coordinator. So no more Dan Quinn flying all over the place. I, I don't. I Dallas and Green Bay to me are you're both a full game too high. Okay. I'm not going to say that you don't finish third in the NFC. You might. Ten and a half wins at this point. You have way too much belief from somebody, mm-hmm. and I don't see it. I mean, there's. I, I'm looking at their schedule, and I'm thinking, I'm not sure there's more than six losses there. Depending on what they do in the division. I could easily see them losing a game to Washington. Okay. I could see them getting swept out by Philadelphia. I don't have the schedule in front of me. I'm just mm-hmm. off. Yeah. I could easily see them getting swept out by Philadelphia. Which division do they play in the non-conference? Um, the AFC North. They could lose every game in that. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't shock me in the least. That was what I, I remembered. There was one of these divisions that I do not like that they're playing. So you think that they could, what, split in the division? Go three and three in the division? That's possible. Then you lose all AFC North teams, and that gets you to seven. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I give them that. And then they got the Detroit Lions on the schedule as the well. Lions is a game I don't see a possibility of them winning. I don't either. But I had San Francisco, Detroit, the Ravens, the Bengals. I don't know about the other two. The Browns is going to be tough because well, both the Browns and the Steelers will be real tough. Good defenses against Dak Prescott. Both those games are on the road. On the road. Dak Prescott on the road. Yeah. You know, it's um yeah yeah I mean, there is a possibility there for more than that but all right well, let me, six guaranteed losses to me all right well let me let, let me give you the other one and maybe you'll understand where i'm coming from are they three full games better than the seattle seahawks no, no. when if there's only a seven game window here because you can't have less than four and a half and you're not going to have more than 11 and a half so okay that doesn't really make a ton of sense to me yeah i feel like your quarterbacks are super similar i'll take seattle's weapons over yours i'll take seattle's defense over yours and you're getting three full games over them oh and by the way they play in a division that's every bit as bad as yours there's one team i'm scared of in that division the other two are rebuilding Mm -hmm. we'll say Mm -hmm. that's way too low so seattle's underrated at seven and a half i believe so i think dallas is overrated at ten and a half seattle's underrated at seven and a half okay all right fair enough that leaves you with one more oh i got one more one more selection to make here Ooh. <sighs> i don't really you know what i'm gonna go with some uh some some plus odds action here i'm gonna take one that's Plus 105 on the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. The Jacksonville Jaguars under eight and a half. See, I couldn't go that far. You I looked at Jacksonville and went, no, oh, you're too bootsy for me to I bet on. I could see this going terribly. I could, you could tell me Jacksonville went anywhere from 5-12 and 12 to 12-5, twelve and five, and I'm not going to fight you on it. Mm-hmm. Those are teams I won't touch. That's why I'd be willing to take a chance on it. I like Dougie Doug, and Trevor's fine. If he takes that leap, yeah, they're going to be a legit contender with the Houston Texans. Sure. If he doesn't, and that O-line isn't any better than it was last year, they could crater into the earth. Yeah, you're going to get smacked by, oh wait, every team in your division. If your O-line is going to be terrible, I don't like that against Tennessee. I don't like it against Indy. I don't like it against Houston either. <laughs> Precisely. So you're immediately on the deficit as far as talent goes i tried to find a way that i would bet on every team in the league there were about six that i just went nope the jaguars were one Mm -hmm. the jets were one um i can't remember who the others were but those were the two that just indianapolis was one 
Indianapolis is another team I look at and go, you could make the playoffs. You could pick in the top five. I don't think either one of those things would surprise me all that much. And at eight and a half, that's just right in the middle. It's Practically every eight and a half team is so up in the air that I just don't even want to touch it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the ones that, at least on, on my screen, the ones I've got at eight and a half are Jacksonville, the Chargers. Oh, who the Chargers are another one. Mm, not doing it. 12 and 5, 5 and 12. Yep. No surprise in, in any of that to me. Yep. Indy, your Tampa Bay Buccaneers, mm-hmm. the Rams and the Browns, and the Bears. That's the other one. That's the, the other one I'm looking at going, it could be. It could be really good. It, it could be terrible. It could be terrible. And, and yeah, but – I'd be leaning on the overside right now. Over eight and a half. I would be Chicago Bears. If I had to give you a lean on any of the eight wind the eight and a half win teams, I would be over on Cleveland and I would be under on everybody else. Okay. That tends to be how I operate when these come out, because I bet a lot of futures. Usually it's wins. I'll take three shots at a at a Super Bowl, and I'll go ahead and tell you, I made my Super Bowl wagers yesterday. When the Cephon Diggs thing started matriculating out, I got Houston at plus 2,500. I doubled down on it with a, a bonus bet that I got for at plus 1,800. Hedged it with Kansas City and hedged it with Cincinnati. Yep. Again, the story of the day, Stephon Diggs going to the Houston Texans. Does that make them the favorite to win it all next year? Some believe so. Jeremy's already made his wagers. Maybe it's time for you to make your wager. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, is live in North Carolina. Has been for a while. If you haven't signed up yet, don't worry. You still have the ability to get in on all of the action and bet on all of your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right here in the Tar Heel State with DraftKings. And for a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code WPEK and bet $5 will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. The best thing about DraftKings to me, not only does it make the enjoyment of watching the games uh, much more, but it's fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. So if you need to get your hands on that money, you can get it real, real quick. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using the code WPEK and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets only with DraftKings Sportsbook with the code WPEK. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. Coming up, the most important message of the day. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Well, not much help for the cold. A stiff breeze around, gusting 30-plus miles per hour this afternoon with mainly rain showers. Winter weather advisory is still in effect for some of the higher elevations to the west and north of us. Overnight tonight, some rain showers, which may mix with a little bit of snow, will drop close to freezing, but I don't think any problems for Friday morning. Partly sunny, breezy in the afternoon, Friday 50, sunny 56 Saturday, sunshine near 70 Sunday. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Taco Bell. Taco Bell's new cravings value menu is a big deal. Or rather, it's 10 big deals. From new items like the loaded nachos to familiar favorites like the spicy potato soft taco. Check it out at a participating Taco Bell today. Available for a limited time only while supplies last. Hey, if you're listening to me right now, I have one thing every business needs most. Attention. Think about it. We swipe and scroll past stuff all day. But when we're driving, cooking, working out, we're also listening. That's the magic of audio at iHeart. We're in your next customer's ears while they're living life and listening, just like you are right now. So get your customers to listen up today using radio, digital, and podcasts. Call 844-AD-HELP-5. That's 844-AD-HELP-5. People are talking about Summit Dental in Asheville. Just check out their Google reviews. One patient writes, I'll start by saying I really hate going to the dentist. My anxiety is always through the roof and I'm always so nervous. However, Summit Dental may be the first place that my anxiety is actually not going through the roof. 
The staff that works at Summit are an incredible team. They're kind, knowledgeable, and funny. I left feeling confident that we have a plan to help restore my teeth and get me on track to a better smile. Find out more about Summit Dental at AshevilleSummitDental.com or call 828-277-6868. It's time to look beyond the label of autism and see the person. I want people to know that I'm smart. I want to go to college. I want to be able to keep up with my peers. This April, the Autism Society is encouraging you to celebrate differences for Autism Acceptance Month. Help spread awareness for early diagnosis and promote inclusion in your community because acceptance happens every day. Go to Autism AutismSociety.org for resources and to learn more. That's AutismSociety.org for resources and to learn more. WWNC is Western North Carolina's election station. With the key races and the stories behind the big issues. From the county to Congress to the White House. On News Radio 570 WWNC. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern Hospitality Touch. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop Custom apparel shops. First news on 570 with Mark Starling. We made it to another season, Tank. Uh, I've not checked on the water quality recently. We're getting ready to get into paddleboard season. That would. would, You know what it is. The E. coli estimator. It literally looks like everybody flushed their toilet at the same time. Yeah, no thank you. I don't want to go out for a wonderful afternoon in the mountains and come back smelling like Andy Dufresne just crawled through the (laughs) sewers of Shawshank Prison. (laughs) Weekday mornings at 6 on News Radio 570 WWNC. Back in the sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville, and it's time for the most important message of the day. Don't do crimes! Love it. Now I'm on edge that people called into question my previous (laughs) don't do crimes. It's got to give it that, that, you know, 110% effort every day there, Jeremy Green. Um, Yeah, so we've got a story here from Texas. And the Texas, they're tough on crime in Texas, if you didn't know, right? It's one of those states that if you're, if you're going to falafel around and find out anywhere, Texas is probably the last place that you want to do that. As Ron White once said, you come to Texas, kill somebody, we will kill you back. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Everybody else is abolishing the death penalty in his state, putting in an express lane. Well... It's, the crime committed here does not nary get anywhere close to the express lane for the electric chair. In fact, it's probably one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. That's saying a lot for Texas. So stay at home, mom. She's in trouble. She's been arrested and she's been, uh, she's been charged with stolen, uh, stealing government property. Would you like to know what it was that she stole, Jeremy? Oh, uh, I'm going to go with rubber bands, Bob. Rubber bands. No, close. I mean, there is a large stock of state-owned rubber bands in the state of Texas. But, no, she she forgot to return her library books. Oh, I saw this story. I didn't know it was in Texas. <laughs> she forgot to return her library books. So she rented a few books from the library. She checked those out. And this was like coronavirus pandemic times apparently her husband did the returning of the books and he only returned like three of them because apparently one of the books was too big to fit in the the overnight slot and then it got buried somewhere and they just never returned it well she goes in to get her driver's license renewed and they won't let her renew her driver's license because they have filed charges against her 
for stealing this book. That feels a little aggressive. The fine for stealing said library book, $570. She shows up in court and they say, you got to pay us $570. And she went, how in the hell am I going to do that? I'm a woman, you know, I'm a, I'm a stay at home mom living on a fixed income. I don't have $570 just to shell out to you. And I said, sorry, well, you, you got to pay us or you won't get your license back. And we'll probably throw you in jail for not paying that um, fine. My only question in this story is who the hell still goes to a library? Well, and she, why? you know, she had to because, well, she's got young kids at home. And so she had to she had to go get the books for the education of the children. Right. So living on a fixed income. Chances are she didn't have multiple computers for the children. So you had to go find some educational materials for them. She has the good news of this is that she has started a GoFundMe page. She is raising the money to pay for her five hundred and seventy dollar ticket so she can get her license back. And she says that with all of the extra money that is raised, she's going to give it to the library system. Which I feel like, you know, no. No, sir. No. I'm not helping you out one little bit. I'm not going to be donating any money to the library system. The state is trying to screw me here. And who owns the library? The government! Exactly. Fear them! Shame them! Shame Shame, the government! Shame the government! (laughs) That is just ridiculous. $570 for, for a library book. And when she told the judge... Look, can I just pay you for the book? The judge goes, "No, we're past that now. Now you got to make now you got to make do. Now you got to make restitution." Yeah, the government makes a lot of sense. Yeah, falafel. Uh, which is <laughs> it's actually ironic that you told a story that makes me fear the government more because my story is about government doing things that don't make any sense. Okay. Did you know that in 17 states in this country adultery is a punishable crime? That makes do sense. you know how many times people have been punishable? under that statute since 1972 in the state of new york i'm gonna go with four bob it's only about a dozen okay ap didn't want to do the legwork on that so they only only about, about a, dozen. a dozen and you know somebody that works for new york times i'm not shocked that you couldn't count that high but now the state of new york really getting to cracking down on crime We're trying to do away with that adultery thing okay let me let me see if I if I understand this correctly. You have a homeless population that is so overcrowded that you literally cannot walk through the city of New York. There have been so many car break-ins that police have stopped responding to it. And yet your general assembly is worried about an adultery ban. I believe we are putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> I mean, I look, I get why that's illegal in the South. There are a lot of things that are illegal. Here, i am just be honest with you. A lot of the things that you do in the privacy of your own bedroom are probably illegal, especially in this here state, where if it feels good, stop. But I don't think these are things that we need to be taking the, the lawmakers' time with. Nobody gets charged with this. Who cares? Just write it off the books. We don't need to talk about it. There didn't need to be an assembly that's not how that works though it should be you have to go through the process to get it taken off the books can't just have people out here striking things from the books then that then we end up like north korea okay i mean or we wind up in the exact boat that we're in right now because that's what we've been doing masks shutting up bars (laughs) didn't hear a lot of discussion about that i'm just throwing it out there i don't remember that day on c-span and trust me at that point i was sitting around listening to a lot of tv no but i sure remember you being real pissed off about it when it happened too so i wasn't saying you're gonna give them the leeway to do this with some things you gotta give them the leeway to do it with all the things and i'm not willing to give them that power or or why can we not just look around and go, hey, what you do in the privacy of your own bedroom? It's, uh, eyes have it? Okay. Let's... <laughs> Nobody cares what you do in the dark times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not always true, but it's, it's another show. 
Nobody cares what you consensually do in the there dark times. There you go. <laughs> That's the one I was looking. I, I was left out. Wondering if he was going down that path of, I don't know. There's a lot of things people do in their bedroom that I was. I, I think we should know about. Sorry, <laughs> left out a word. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but every time I hear stories like that, I'm like, yeah, it's it's government dollars. Really hard at work. Yeah, glad we're taking time to really narrow it down on the big big ticket items well, look if we solve all the problems we're not gonna have jobs anymore and i can solve every problem in america problem in america with four laws the only problem is that if i set them into this microphone i would be called a lot of names no and doubt. most of them are not nice no and every one of them in with ist no <laughs> well <laughs> fend for yourself <laughs> uh okay so we're we the the meetings and such right the the meetings with the prospects they did not just begin no. if you're like me and and didn't know that it's only that the big guys are now making their visits meeting with teams caleb williams had his meeting with the chicago bears we all know how that's gonna yeah go. here's how that went hey caleb which locker you want that one right there okay we're, we're good <laughs> you go home now free snow cone what do you what, what do you what do you like to have for lunch would you like to create a special menu for the uh cafeteria lunch we brought in um we we brought in this 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 lovely lady right here who's going to paint your nails every every week <laughs> top 30 visits have begun for uh for all the guys you're you're real excited roma dunze was in new york today uh i mean look the visits they, they mean things you just got to be careful with putting too much into it. I put too much into this every year because I can't, especially the further down the rabbit hole we've gone, you know, this year being at the senior bowl, this year being at the combine, seeing how all these things work. It's really hard for me to wrap my brain around how a team would draft a guy that was never in their building, especially high, mm -hmm. but they do, they do every year. This, that's how I got burned last year. You know, I was, I'm in the media mock draft contest every year. Had I just listened to both my heart and my head with what I had been told, I would have finished better than I did. But I got so locked into, well, Team A didn't have Prospect B in their building, so of course they're not going to draft him. And then what happened? Team trades up to get a guy that was never in their building. Mm -hmm. It matters. Don't get me wrong. It matters. I do not really understand why Chicago wasted a visit with, with Caleb Williams. It's a foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. You have a way bigger decision to me at nine. And now you've they're doing like a mock trial with the scouts to determine which position is is more important. I more look at guys like Roma Dunze and Brock Bowers or Dallas Turner or Jared Verse. Those are the guys that I'm curious. Which ones are you putting the because you only get 30 visits. Dallas Turner was in their building today, by the way, as well. Yes. And that's I guess that's more where I lean on it. I see others that more, they perk my ears up. Like Chop Robinson was in with the Jets today. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to no. me. No. You don't have a second round pick. So what does that tell you? It tells you the Jets are in prime position to trade down. Mm -hmm. Because they're looking at prospects that don't fall into a, into a range where they could take them. Jets aren't taking a pass rusher at 10. You start seeing a guy that's going to go in the 25 to 45 range, it should perk your ears up of, hmm, the Jets pick right in front of two teams that both need quarterbacks, and we think they're all going to just cast it all asunder to trade up. You know, every time we have these trade-up scenarios, they almost never pan out. I mean, it seems like every mock I see has either the Cardinals or the Chargers trading down with the Vikings. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one in probably three weeks that didn't have that. What if it doesn't? What if it doesn't? What if you have Bo Nix and J.J. McCarthy and, and Michael Penix are, are sitting there at 10? That's where I think the, the visits more make sense. It's not really the prospect. It's more the range. Chicago has Dallas Turner in the building. They've had Roma Dunze in the building. They've had Malik Neighbors, I think. I can't remember. I think yeah, that was like a week right. ago. That tells me that nine is probably not going to be auctioned off. You start what you start using ten to fifteen percent of your visits on guys that can only go with one pick. You pretty well rest assured you'd have to blow the team away. Yeah, and that's where I'm at with Chicago. I, I think Chicago is going to pick at one. They're going to pick at nine. I, I think the Chargers are going to pick at five. Mm -hmm. 
I think the Cardinals are going to pick it four. To be really honest with you, because I don't think these these Godfather type deals are coming. Yeah. I think it's way more likely you get a team that you're not expecting. And a little birdie told me that there was a possibility that there's a team that's already picking in the top ten that could make a trade with a team that's in the top ten. Interesting. Of course, we'll follow all of the draft this season news right here in the Sportsocracy and coming up on tomorrow's program, our fan mock draft. Oh, it's going to be fun. We'll have, that's a day definitely to watch us on the YouTube because we'll have the board up. We're not going to talk about every pick. We're going to answer your draft questions. We have, we have been so busy through this draft season that we haven't done as much content as we usually do. Uh, now we're all set up to really go full speed on the draft, and it will it, it, largely your draft event calendar will kick off tomorrow with the the viewer mock and we'll have 20 days because the draft is three weeks from tonight Mm -hmm. if you still want to get in on that you want to claim yourself a team you can uh reach out to floster damas at espn draft nerd on the uh on the twitter machine for all of the people that are in it i will be posting the the teams with the name of the people that are going to be doing it follow us on facebook instagram all those good things uh, and you'll have to comment so I can send you the link to the Discord where we can talk back and forth as we're doing this so you can talk trades and all that good stuff. We'll be back with you tomorrow right here on ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400 at noon. See you then. This March, Wendy's has some amazing deals on their hamburgers made with fresh, never frozen beef. Like a juicy Dave single for a buck and a fresh $2 Dave's double with an app offer. It's such a good deal, we wrote a little ditty about it. Get it for a buck. Dave Single, Dave Single, order the app. Dave Single, Dave Single, get it for a buck. Choose wisely, choose Wendy's official hammer or March Madness. Limited time offer, participating in U.S. Wendy's. See offer details and redeem at Wendy's app. Account registration required. Fresh beef available in the contiguous U.S. and Alaska. In this week's Marketers Report, we hear about the importance of local radio from Allison Griffin, head of marketing at State Farm iHeart has such a broad broadcast reach that is local and for us to be able to touch customers with a local feel but at a national scale is so efficient and important for us. As the number one audio company, iHeart Media gives marketers access to the audiences, trusted influencers, and data you need to grow. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades, regenerative medicine. If you are tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We're talking natural biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup. Dr. Scheinkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Phone 828-333-9517 in Asheville and in Greenville. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Well, not much help for the cold. A stiff breeze around, gusting 30-plus miles per hour this afternoon with mainly rain showers. Winter weather advisory is still in effect for some of the higher elevations to the west and north of us. 
Overnight tonight, some rain showers, which may mix with a little bit of snow. will drop close to freezing, but I don't think any problems for Friday morning. Partly sunny, breezy in the afternoon. Friday, 50. Sunny, 56. Saturday, sunshine near 70. Sunday. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stagic. This report is sponsored by Taco Bell. Taco Bell's new cravings value menu is a big deal. Or rather, it's 10 big deals. From new items like the loaded nachos to familiar favorites like the spicy potato soft taco. Check it out at a participating Taco Bell today. Available for a limited time only while supplies last. In this week's Marketers Report, Dana Nussbaum, Executive Vice President, Worldwide Marketing at Warner Brothers Discovery, weighs in on regional audio marketing. Although we're marketing at a very broad scale, it does include specific local markets, and that's the beauty of iHeart's network. As the number one audio company, iHeart Media gives marketers access to the audiences, influencers, and data you need to grow. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. This election year, there are so many issues that divide us. Which candidate will wind up with the task of trying to unite us? Join us as the future unfolds on News Radio 570 WWNC. Western North Carolina's election station. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch Offs. I could get a chance to dash through. A warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to $2 million in cash. And that explains the tuxedo. I'm chafing. Feel the rush with new Ultimate Dash scratch-offs from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning are 1 in 3.78. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. From the Ingalls Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. I lost 90 pounds in a year with PhD weight loss, and I lost all the X's in my clothes. Went from triple X down to went from triple X down to large, and I did it naturally with the help of PhD weight loss. And if you need to shed a few pounds, I want the same for you because it feels amazing when you do, and it's a proven process that stays with you for the rest of your life. You know, summer is right around the corner, and you still have time to feel amazing and look your best because. That's what happens when you drop the pounds of PhD weight loss. No gimmick, shots, or pills. This is weight loss not dependent on supply and demand. It's the best gift that you could ever give yourself. 
They customize a plan to reach your optimal weight loss goal with a team of coaches that educate, encourage, and help you navigate day to day. Dr. Ashley Lucas, who founded PhD Weight Loss, built a roadmap that teaches you to eat well and change your mindset about food. That mental approach, getting over those mental hurdles, that's the key to success. Mm. Let's see where that's at time wise. Down to my clothes. Went from triple X down to went from with the help of PhD weight law. And I did it naturally with from triple X down to large. And I triple X down to Triple X was went from went from triple went from triple X X down to large, and I did it naturally with the help of PhD. large, and I did it naturally with the help of PhD weight loss. And if you need to shed a few pounds, no gimmick shots or pills is weight loss not dependent on supply and demand it's the best gift that you could ever give yourself they customize a plan to reach your optimal weight loss goal day to day dr ashley lucas who founded phd weight loss built a road to teach you to eat and change your mindset about food about food getting over those mental hurdles that's the key to success PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. It really works. Get started today. Go to myphdweightloss.com. That's myphdweightloss.com. Key to success. PhD Weight Loss. That's the key to success. PhD.